Good stuff. To the blue corner, we have a cruiserweight bout to start off with a record of 6 and 13. Hailing from Schenectady, New York, he weighed in at 196 pounds. Warm welcome, please, to Mr. Eric Abraham. Turning to the red corner, representing Northport, Alabama, no, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He brings with him a record of five and two, weighed in at 194.6 pounds. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Marcellos Wilder. Your referee is Mr. Brian Gary. Six rounds or less, cruiserweights. Just about ready to rumble. Marcellus Wilder and Eric Abraham. A six round cruiserweight fight. Take a look at our tail of the tape for our first battle of the night. The 32 year old against the 36 year old. Everything else virtually identical. Wild with a slight reach advantage. We are underway. It's right away, the southpaw Abraham and the right-hander Wilder. So, a clash of uh, styles right off the jump. It is time to fight. Mike Goldberg, Antonio Tarver, Paulie Molina, Najee, Roy Jones Jr. This is a great matchup. Marcelos Wilder, the younger brother of superstar heavyweight Deontay Wilder. Four years younger than Deontay. White trunks for the southpaw Eric Abraham. Black with the gold trim for Wilder. First fight in 28 months for Marcelos Wilder. <laughs> Roy Jones, that is a long layoff. Yes, yeah, a very long layoff, but you got to remember for Wilder, he shows a lot of poise, not have had an amateur career, had to only be a veteran of seven fights professional. I mean, he looks really good. He pretends he's been here with really good fighters, like his brother, because for him to be this poised, and, and look this good this early on a fight with only seven professional fights says a lot. It says a whole lot, and I want to just uh, piggyback off that. In the fighter meeting, you know, uh, he has a lot of belief in himself. You know, even though he has a famous brother, and a lot of people may think, okay, he want to just repeat after his brother, but I believe he really believes he has what it takes. But like you said, no amateur background, Roy. That kind of puts him behind the eight ball but at the same time, he's a work in progress. He's still learning. Yeah, and he's been an athlete his whole life, the college football career. And the Wilders have good genetics, athletic genetics. You know, even Deontay was a former basketball player himself. So you can see the, uh, he's, he's got an athletic frame, athletic body, and uh, he's been drawn to the sport. Abraham, on the other side, just fought 35 days ago, stopped in the second round of a six-round battle. Body shots, good combinations thrown there. Scheduled for six rounds. If Abraham don't get that head out the air, he's going to be stopped again. Punching with his head very high up in the air. Not a good thing when you're in the ring with any type of a Wilder. Yeah, Wilder's got to be careful not to overstay. He's welcome in that pocket. He'll let go of some good punches, but has to understand when it's time to step out of the pocket before the return comes. And Wilder coming off two knockout losses, so he's in desperate need of an impressive win, and I think he had the right opponent in front of him tonight. Eric Abraham has been stopped in 10 of his 13 losses. So much to all three of my partner's points. Better get away from the power of Marcelos Wilder. He said his first ever sparring session was against the heavyweight champion, Big Bro. The moment I knew that I impressed him was after a good right hand, Roy. His big brother said, wow, you got up. <laughs> it's brotherly love, I guess. <laughs> Antonio, the, at least the, the, the scouting report on Marcelos is that he fights like Deontay to a degree. Waits, jabs, pause a little bit, waits, then pulls the trigger. Would you agree with that? Well, right now he started to get his jab off early in the round, but then he kind of went away from it when he had his opponent back to the rope. He started winging a little bit. We want to, even though you have him on the, on the rope, you want to keep those shots short so you won't get counted counter 
coming back, you know. So I think he's still a work in the progress, but I want to see the second round that he gets busy with that. Check I, I think that'll open up a lot more opportunities for him. You know, Kachuk's been off for so long. Man. Coming back against the Southpaw, you saw this yesterday in the fighter meeting that you know, one of the stoppages, the losses he had was because the guy suddenly turned Southpaw against him, and he was, was kind of confused. Like, so considering that, and now the long layoffs, the fact he's coming back in against the Southpaw, Interesting choice of opponent, but nonetheless, also a willingness to learn and get get in there and, and, do, and do right. Willingness to learn and to show that he learned from that last mistake. And to get back at it here on Pro Box TV, great opportunity to showcase his skills. Wilder, five victories, two by knockout. Round two, and the southpaw off to a good start. Eric Abraham, white and gold, black and gold for Marcelo's Wilder. And, and uh, Wilder has to, be, has to be careful here because me and Tarver were speaking yesterday about a fight we saw over the weekend where one guy was supposed to be the opponent but gained confidence. This guy may be gaining confidence already. So Wilder needs to do something to get this confidence out of him or it could be very dangerous later. Yeah, that's a good point, Roy. You know, sometimes you, you feel like you're in control. You get a guy, you let a guy land a shot like that and all of a sudden he feels like he can get his way into the fight. He's looking like a different fighter now. He came the first round like he was supposed to be the opponent. Right now he's looking like he's not the opponent. Marcellus has to be careful again. He's got to understand when it's time to get out. It's almost like a sixth sense you get, with, especially with experience. You understand when, how many punches you can let go of in that pocket before you can get out. And it varies from circumstance to circumstance, but Marcellus sometimes gets himself clipped on the, on the out. Marcellus has to show caution because that's Eric Abraham's nickname. Eric Caution Abraham. He said, I'm a southpaw. I'm a boxer at best. Either distance or KO doesn't matter. He just wants to walk away with a win. Been a while since he has had his arm raised in victory. Good second round for the southpaw. Yeah, what, what, like Tony said, what Wilder needs to do is start using that jab a little bit more. He's allowing this guy to get too comfortable, and it's not good when you allow the opponent to become comfortable. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's a little bit harder to jabbing in the southpaw when you're a right hander, but nonetheless, Abraham's dropping that lead hand. He's staying a little low, so it's not a far distance for Wilder to be able to shoot that, that jab and, and, and land it. And Wilder has, I believe, to get a little bit more creative with this offense. He's done the same move since the opening round. He's going to have to double up with that jab and maybe bring that right hand, not winging it, but straight. And that's the thing, Antonio. It's a, it's a little bit of the inexperience plays in. The inexperience factor plays into that. And what I believe will also serve him well, he got to go to that body right there. He's trying to hit the target. Just hit mass sometimes. Yeah, the body's a target, too, you know? Right, right. right. A lot of guys forget that, you know? They head hunting. Yeah, exactly, they exactly. Holly Abraham does a nice job with that jab. He steps forward, and he's long, and he's quick with it. Yeah, he's quick with it, and he's also on the back foot, so he's looking to almost draw, draw Marcellus in for, to maybe possibly counter him. So that's when Marcellus would be better off served to maybe faint before he, he gets his way in there. Nice counter there by, by Wilder. That's the first attempt at a counter that I've seen. And again... Every punt, he has knockout on him. He's going to have to start just timing a little bit mm -hmm. instead of trying to be so aggressive with the power. And that's the nerves of the inexperience. Right. <laughs> Big Brother held the WBC heavyweight title for five years, 10 title defenses. The first American heavyweight champion since 2007. Back to back setbacks to Tyson Fury, of course. Marcelo's got the late start. He took up boxing at 28 years old. So, like you guys talked about, very short, if any, amateur career. But it's the family business, so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. You got that right. Literally and figuratively, I assume. <laughs> Previous fight, two years, four out. months, three days ago. He said, sometimes hope is the only thing you have. If you have it, then you have got everything. Round three. The Southpaw, Eric Abraham. In the white trunks, Marcellus Weidler getting us started. He's in the black trunks. Good utilization of the jab in round two by Abraham. Let's see what Wilder is able to do to answer here in round three. You can see Eric Abraham confidence building. As long as this, as long as the fight goes on, his confidence is going to build. Wilder's going to have to hurt him to deter him. 
Roy Abraham is on a losing streak, but Abraham has been very active. He's active, and you can see it now that he's active because his timing and his rhythm is really good. Had he not been active, he'd have already got caught by one of those big punches. But because he's been active, he's kind of slipping them with his hands down, rolling them. He's doing all sorts of things that you want to see a veteran do. Yeah, he does have 19 pro fights, does Abraham. So, you know, he, despite being an opponent, he's been in the ring. And he's had six fights since Marcelo's last fought in November of 2019. Once again, nice. here at Pro Box, when you get in there, it's a 50-50 chance. You got Any, that right. Anything might happen. And you can see Abraham still looking at that counter left hand. He almost pauses that lead southpaw jab. He's looking for Wilder to step in recklessly and catch him with a, with a left hand counter. Either he's going to get caught trying to set the right hook up, or he's going to catch Wilder with the right hook. One or the other. Marcelo's not known as a volume guy. Looking for the body there. Caution on the low blow that continue. You hear the corner of Wilder asking for that jab. And now that you mentioned Roy, the right hook is kind of, is there. You know, I thought he was set, I thought he was trying to set up for the counter left hand, but now that I see off that lane on that back foot, he's he could throw that check hook. That's the one. Uh, if Wilder falls in, yeah, he, he just hasn't done it. Yeah, cause Wilder falls in on that front foot a lot. Yep. I still like him stepping behind that jab. It gives him more control, and you don't have to wing so much. And a lot of times you jab one time. Ooh, there we go. That's what I told you about right there. Roy, you call that. That's what I told you about right there. I knew it was coming. But again, you know, Wilder said his defense, sometimes when he loses focus, his defense goes. He took that punch pretty good, I must say. Took it very good. And Abraham followed up with a straight as well to connect it. Yeah, going back to what you guys said in round one, though, you know, I'd still like to see some body shots on the yep. part of Wilder. Just a straight right hand to the chest, to the stomach, just to, just to give a different target to the opponent. And then maybe you could disguise the right hand to the head because of that. I'd like to see Wilder do more work, period, because this guy's getting more confidence by the second. Southpaw and a long layoff, confusing through the first three rounds for Marcelo Wilder. Abraham landing a couple of big shots in that round. You see Abraham back and back and come with that counter left hand. Oh, that was the right hook. He laid the left out like I said before and came with the right hook. He saw it coming already because that right there is when he's relaxing and wasn't really wasn't getting the head down. But I knew Abraham saw it. It was just a matter of time. And yeah. congrats to Abraham. He set that up beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what it is too? Marcelo Wilder had the aim up for the left hand and then he kind of relaxed thinking nothing was coming behind yeah. it. And if you're going to relax, you better step out of range before relaxing like that, you know, and he never saw the hook coming. Wilder's two professional losses, in both of them, he was stopped. Round four. We get started in the cruiserweight division. Marcelo Wilder, Eric Abraham, Mike Colbert, Paulie Malinaji, Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver. Great to be here, Pro Box TV. I don't know what they found uh, to talk about, but they discussing something between each other in the ring. The Wilder kind of did what Paulie said and landed a good straight right to the body right there. But it may be a little late now because this kid has major confidence right now. Love the way Abraham is snapping that jab right now. He has mad confidence right now. Feels like he's in charge. And Roy, he is, right? I mean, so far he is. Yeah. Wilder has to do something to change the tables here or we're going to have problems. Wilder's going to have to force the issue right now. Press him and really force his will on this guy. He's going to have to break Abraham. It's going to, this fight's going to get a lot tougher. And, 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 it, and it's already tougher just because he, Abraham has reached that point when you guys were talking about earlier where you let the opponent gain confidence. Now that he's gained it, even if you hit him with a couple of shots, he's not just going to go away anymore. You know, sometimes these opponents come into the fight with an opponent mentality. But once you, they break that opponent mentality, they're landing a shot. Tough. It's hard to break it out of them. I mean, if you land, nice kind of left hand there by Abraham. Yeah. It's been a long time since Abraham has earned a victory, June of 2019. But he is working his way towards a potential one here tonight on Pro Box TV. He has the more experience, and that experience is starting to show right now. That's it. 
Born in Birmingham, Alabama, fighting out of Schenectady, New York. Everything Roy talked about it, Antonio, everything's changed. His facial expressions, his bounce, the, the non-punching, the non-verbal of Eric Abraham has changed completely. Yeah, he's definitely in his bag right now. He's feeling confident. I don't know if he's winning this fight right now, but it's definitely gotten a, a lot closer. And again, I want to point out that poise also is something maybe Wilder oh, could learn. Shot the, maybe Wilder could learn from his younger brother because he seemed to be a lot more poised even when things aren't isn't going his way in the ring. Right. And Wilder landed a right hand there and fell. He sure did. Yeah. Right. That was a good right hand that he actually landed. I think he took away the attention off of a good shot that he landed because he slipped as he landed. Wilder the Lancer after a few flurries he has not yet. And let's see if when he does, he can do so with composure. I think Wilder getting a little closer to Abraham right now with that jab. What he's doing at the top is he's doing something very dangerous. After he steps in with that jab, he's relaxing. Yeah, he's waiting. That's not good. Because he's trying to aim that right hand, yeah, exactly. he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's stepping in and then trying to target that right hand instead of just shooting it. And he's trying to find that target once he's already in range and it could put him in position to get hit with the hook again. Yep. Round five, this fight scheduled for six. Both of Marcellus Wilder's knockouts have come in the first round. We are well past the first round, obviously, and they came in his first two professional fights. Round five, the Southpaw Abraham looking very good here in our opening bout of the night. I think this round five is going to be important to who's going to win this fight because I believe the conditioning is going to tell the difference right now. Who's really been running? Who's really been doing road work? Who really wants this fight? And somebody can still step up and be the boss of this fight. Right now, they've been, there's been a lot of waiting in between the shots. Nobody's really taking control and just started to boss it. There is an opportunity for somebody to step up, though. Eric Abraham fought last October once, fought twice in November of 21 fought 35 days ago and here he is again tonight this is what you love to see you love to see a guy in front of a journeyman that can make him have to think he's forcing wilder to have to think and figure out what kind of tools he has in his box because if you don't think this guy's gonna beat you. Wilder's well, been finding a home for that right hand even towards the end of the last round. If you just add a little bit more to it, it will be really good for him. I Maybe. think a, a little bit more added right pressure. There. Hook or another right hand though. Nice. Like Abraham trying to land that hook again. But he's gotta be careful again, Roy, because when he does when he's looking for it, he's he's in that no man's land and sometimes he has a slight pause after the jab where he's looking for the right hand. And that pause happens in punching ring. That's a very dangerous place. Paul, it's almost as if Abraham had such success with that punch earlier. Much to your guys' point, he's, hey, he's looking for that again. And there's an exchange here, yeah. Beautiful exchange. I like the way Wilder stayed composed in that exchange again. And he's still landing some good shots right now. And now Marcellus has adjusted. Starting to bully Abraham a little bit here in round five. Well, I like to see from Wilder a little bit of a, his knees bending a little bit. You know, I feel like he stands almost like his brother, but his brother's six seven. You know what I mean? Like he's he's a little bit too high up. I don't, I'm not saying he should crouch and and, and be in a, a, a sort of a shell or a crab stance, but it's a little bit oh good, good combination. But just a little bit of a st entering and exiting, slightly with his knees bent at least. Abraham, a couple big swings. Sorry, Roy, big swings and misses. Uh, I see where uh, Wilder gets in trouble at some time in his fights. He can be having moments, but it seems like he let down defensively. 
and that's experience. You got to oh. hold. Walking to the hook again, Roy. Bad hook. That hurt him that time. I, I was looking that to see if he looked for it. That one hurt him. That one hurt him bad. And it seemed like when he get hit, he lose focus. Yep, he's hurt right now. He's hurt bad. Paulie, I was saying to you, he's, he's looking for that hook again, and he found it. He sure did. Tell you what, he got a heart, though, because that was a good shot he took, and he still fought after that. But again, he got caught because he stepped in and just kind of waited there. I mean, he steps in and then looks for something. You got to find what you're looking for from outside of range. You guys know that as well. You know, when you, you step in and then look for something, you're going to get hit while you're waiting for, the, for what you're looking for. Too late to be in that no man's land. Yeah, exactly. It's important to stay in the fight mentally. Yeah. So until you have those apples, that's where you get to. Set for the sixth and final round. Wilder need a stop to win this fight. Water. Oh, man. I don't think so. Uh, you need a, probably a strong finish for sure. Okay. But then, what else? Let's go. 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 let us Kind of up in the air, you know, because there's not been a lot of action in both ways. Well, I would say this fight is up in the air, whoever, yeah, yeah, whoever you get through this round yep. does well for themselves. Yeah. It's one of those where you want to win the last round and close the show. Exactly. That's what the corners are talking about as well. Be first, you need this round. Abraham, white and gold, Southpaw, Wilder. First fight in 28 months, looking for a professional victory, number six. Wilder trying to counter inside. Miss a, missing by a little bit just now. What else Wilder has to learn how to do is hide it when he's tired. He's showing fatigue a little bit here. Like that, that's a very dangerous place to be. That guy spins around with a shot there, he's out of here. And he's standing straight up. He's straight up in there. He's not hiding the fatigue. I've been trying to do that in that turn time. Uh, he's almost, he, he almost has a similar stance to his brother, but his brother can do that at 6'7". 6'7", Wilder. 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 Snap jab utilized very well by Eric Abraham. <laughs> you see Wilder, he's slowly but surely getting by his waist. <laughs> That's fatigue, guys. <laughs> First is going to be key here, but you don't want to be first in the big counter, counter there himself. Good counter. Good defense by Wilder, but he's got to put himself in position to hit back. Antonio, how tall are you? I'm 6'2". All right, 6'2". He's 6'3". You, you know about the spring because not only offensively, but defensively, it allows your lower body to have the movement, correct? Well, he just has to break to, give, to move the target. Because if you don't move the target, you're sitting up. Right. You're depending all on your, your body and avoidance from the hips up. That's it. Ooh. Abraham taking control again here in round six. Looking for his first victory since June of 2019. And what neither one of these guys are doing right now is something that's very detrimental. If either one would go to the body right now, yeah. they get them, they find themselves a knockout. While, while they go to the body at close range, you gotta watch his hands in the position, you gotta be careful. Once again, that fatigue is showing. See, that fatigue is showing right there. And Abraham looks in spectacular shape. Looks like a guy who just fought 35 days ago. Abraham going to be mad at himself tomorrow, too, if he loses this fight because it was a fight that was in his reach. He just didn't get it. Oh. Look again, though. It's in the hands of the judges. They go the distance. Nice fight. That's all for, to Marcelo for challenging himself, though, because he put lost, last lost to a southpaw, and he came right back after a two-year layoff with a southpaw. That's saying a lot, too, so. And he fought like he definitely didn't want to uh, lose tonight. Yeah, exactly. So put his heart out there on this play. Mm -hmm. 
Eric Abraham doing a great job showcasing his skill set. Quick southpaw. As I mentioned, top of the fight, he said, I'm a boxer at best. Either distance or KO doesn't matter. As long as I walk away with the win, let's see what the judges have to say. As we await the official decision of this cruiserweight bout. Graham gained a lot of confidence between rounds two and round six. Yes. A lot of confidence. And Roy, you mentioned it, the very split second you saw his confidence start to build. Yeah, you could tell that there was a change of who was in charge right away. After that second round, he came out as though he knew I can win this fight if I fight. And he came out and started trying to act as though he wanted to win. There's hoping to win, there's wanting to win, and there's expecting to win. Different mindsets, right? Totally different mindsets. I know your fights, win, lose, or draw. I expected a great post-fight interview. That I did expect. <laughs> yeah, sometimes a bit too much. <laughs> All right, let's see who is reigning supreme. We have a decision. Judges have scored it thusly. Test, test, here we go. Thank you. Judges have scored it thusly. Ryan Gary, 58-56. Joanne Richards, 58-56, the other way. And the tiebreaker, Michael Ross, 58-56. Your winner by split decision, Eric Abraham. Eric Abraham by split decision. Wow. Stops his nine fight skid here on Pro Box TV. Congratulations to him. He came in and put the work in and got a victory. Yeah, and, and, and on that last round, made up sealed it for him with a 58-56s. Yeah. You know, he landed a hook right just before the bell that may, in a round that may have been of, you know, on, the, cu on the cusp that may have gone to Wilder had he not landed that kind of semi-big hook at the end, of, uh, right at the end of the round. Round one, guys. In round one, you see Wilder and Charlie got hit with a hook, with a hook right there, and that put him on notice that that the kid could punch. From that point, the kid got coming. Oh. That was the hook I was talking about earlier that was going to possibly land, and it landed. There, he landed another hook as Wilder was coming in. That shot hurt Wilder more than any of them, and because of the bigger, better punches, I think that's why he got the decision. Very ironically, you saw the hook before he started really landing it. And then after he started landing it, it sort of became the, the key for him the rest of the fight. I think that's what won him the rounds that, that he wound up winning. It was won one in the fight as well. It yeah. was the signature punch for him. Yes. And Antonio, it, it took Marcellus totally off his game. Well, totally I, off his game. I still think he did a, a lot show differently than getting knocked out. Of course. Because you know, he got hit big, a couple times big. But he took the shot, so we know his heart was in the right yes. place, but maybe his conditioning failed him tonight. Yes, indeed. We are set now for Daniel Blunkus from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, making his professional debut against Andre Graham. Four-round super middleweight fight. Blancas, almost 200 amateur bouts, a 13-time national amateur champion. Started boxing at age eight, sparred against two-time super middleweight champion David Benavides, said that he had to bring his A-game, and still, as you guys expect, he learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and here is his opponent, Andre Graham, born in Denver, fighting out of Arvada, Colorado. He also started boxing at AJ. Took a little break to be a dad in his mid-20s. He's back as a dad to support his family. Looking for a win here on Pro Box TV. <laughs> Official introductions from Michael Woods.
Ladies and gentlemen, bout number two coming up. We have a super middleweight attraction set for four rounds or less. First, the blue corner, coming in from Arvada, Colorado. Pro debut. Please put your hands together for Mr. Andre Graham. And in the red corner, it's one of our future stars. His nickname is the Iceman. Also, pro debut. Weighing in at 165.6. Please put your hands together for the Iceman, Daniel Blanca. Four rounds or less super middleweight. Daniel Blancus, Andre Graham. Both men making their professional debut right here on Pro Box TV. Take a look at our tail of the tape for this super middleweight bout. Arvada, Colorado's Graham, 11 years the elder, four inches shorter than 6'4", Daniel Blancas, reach virtually identical. Fight scheduled for four rounds. Here we go! It's time to fight! Blancas, 20 years old. Graham, much older. Graham, looking to work his way in. Southpaw stands. Blancas, very tall at 6'4", in the white trunks, with the white trim, or white with red, pardon me, red with white, his opponent, Andre Graham. Blancas is a very good amateur fighter. Uh, going to be a very good pro prospect because he has so much experience. He's tall, he knows how to use that range, and he had over 200 amateur fights. 16-time national champion, that tells you something. And having the luxury to spar and train with world champions at this level, man, it really puts you ahead of the game for his experience. Because I remember, you know, back in the day when I used to train with pros, you know, Winky Wright and guys like that. Those lessons really helped me along the way. And that's the thing, too, the fact that you can't even get in there and train with them shows the level that you're on because pros aren't going to waste their time no. if you can't hang with them. Good shot by Graham. He's landing a beautiful straight left, straight down the pipe on Black. Oh, another oh, right another left, another one. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, Graham didn't look like your ordinary 0-0 uh, fighter. You know, he has two pro-am fighters. He's 2-0. But you would think with the confidence he's coming in here with, that he would have an amateur background of some sort. And he's landed that straight left three times in a already. Yes. Took a break from age 22 to 25 to be a family man, and right back to the grind. He's got two boys, age five and seven, a stepdaughter, age 11. He's also handing out bloody noses right now. Yes, he is. <laughs> no charge. But this is the, the blueprint for, uh, you know, Gary Jonas. He wanted to test these guys, see what they're made of, their resolve early. And Graham said he knows Blancas is highly touted. He respects that. But he said it's his time. He has a job to do. He thanks Blancas and Gary Jonas for the opportunity. We're in round one of a scheduled four in the super middleweight division. Yeah, Tarvin, like you said, Graham has some sort of experience because he's doing some really good things in here. Interesting thing, too, uh, by the book, is moving the wrong way, which, yeah. is why, which is why the book is always a bit one-dimensional in my, in my eyes. <laughs> I always found it ironic because when you're in there, you can kind of see things doing the technically not fundamental stuff. And he's been having a lot of success moving to his own left against the right-hander, which is towards the right-hander's right hand. Well, Blankers now has kind of figured him out, so now Blankers is doing a lot better because he's got to figure it out totally now, except that straight left hand right there. And like they say, it's levels to this, and Blankers is taking it up a couple <laughs> notches. Into the corner of Blankers. Here's the 
best punch that's been landed for Graham so far. He landed this straight left off of a faint hook right there, which was a beautiful setup. And Blanca showed a beautiful chin to be able to take that because that was as best that you can ask to be hit with. And the thing about that setup, he, he felt like he was going to throw the right hook, and Blanca was on his way in, and yeah. the, the fake hook made Blanca stop in his tracks. But he stopped at that mid range where the left hand could still reach him. So instead of throwing the hook, Graham shot the left, the straight left hand right where Blanca had stopped biting on that feint. Stopped due to biting on the feint. Those are the type of moves to show you that this guy has to have experience. some type of experience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's a pro tribe. <laughs> Professional debut for both men. Blanc is just 20 years old at 6'4". I talked about earlier sparring with David Benavides. He has the frame of Benavides or Diego Pachenko, who he kind of grew up in the amateurs with. Good body shot by Blake. And that's what we we thought that we really do him well now, but I think he's figuring him out. He has. But this guy catches and shoots, bro. I've never seen a pro debut guy know how to right. catch and shoot, man. <laughs> a, two of them. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurt him. That hook hurt him. That hook hurt him. Yeah, he's hurt bad right now. Blanc is known oh. for his aggressiveness. Turning it up here in round two. This is what Graham is going to realize, his levels. He's getting set up right now. Big time. You see it. Big time. Blanc is utilizing that long frame. Nice uppercut. Graham is here to fight, bro. I tell you that. He ain't running for nothing. Yeah, calm it down a little bit, Blankus. Calm it down and stay sharp. Don't fight like he's fighting. Because if you fight like he's fighting, you're going to run into a shot. Good body shot. Right now, he's pot shot. He's not jabbing anymore. He's not stepping with it. This is what you call pot shot and leading for the knockout. But Graham is starting to get on where he is. Yeah, he is. Blancus has got some nice torque, doesn't he, Paulie? Yeah, he does. Oh, oh, oh my oh. damn man! <laughs> wow! He got another it. right hand! He's got to keep that left hand up, man. He's going to get hit another right hand right here if he doesn't. He so he is. He took three right hands in a row. Ooh, wow. Man. Telegraph. Andre Graham is one tough out. Now he's one step from being out right now. Bro. Now you see Graham inexperienced now. Oh! Big left, it is all over! Just like that! <laughs> Daniel Blanc is by knockout in his professional debut. That was a nasty knockout. Guys. Yes, it was. I tell you, man, that's not an easy pro debut himself. Graham got ready to make sure Graham is okay. He's trying to roll over on his arm. They're they going to make him roll over on his shoulder. They're not careful, man. You have to be careful with that left shoulder. How they roll him around. There he is. Okay, he's good. What a fight that was. That was. Just the fact, guys, that Andre Graham was still standing after those three straight big right slam. I mean, even he knew how to fight well. I mean, yeah, you know, that, that was a, you know, he don't have the skill. But he has the heart. But he, yeah. And he's you know, he, been trained somewhere. This is, he didn't look like a novice. Old he, he wasn't a guy that had to fight blank. Right, you know, right. You know, he didn't have to be the opponent, right? This guy, this guy knows how to fight. You know, he could actually be the guy, be the A-side. You know, pro box don't give no gimmies though, man. That's a, not at all. Not at pro all. debut, blank was in rough. A bloody <laughs> nose and everything. <laughs> Second round knockout in his professional debut. 20-year-old Daniel Blankis, who trains right here at the Pro Box TV facility. Ignacio Blankis in his corner, and then the coaches here on site who do a great job, Mark and Asa. And he, he pointed out what we always talk about, guys about the fact that Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver, Paulie Malignaggi are around to try to give him some tips, which is a wonderful thing for a young man to realize how special and unique that is that you guys are here to help out. Well, he's like a sponge. You know, some of these fighters, they, they draw to it. And he's one of the guys that always have that ear open. And he's looking, he's looking for and seeking the advice. So this guy really wants to be great. He wants to be good. He wants to be champion. 
Right, you see the same thing, I'm sure? Yes, I see the same thing. These two magic men here have really served him well because he pulled out some magic out the head tonight <laughs> and made a big thing happen, so, you know. Uh, Superman won nothing early. Part of the official decision, Michael Woods. The decision is in. It was rendered in violent fashion. Two minutes and two seconds. Round two. Knockout. Badass knockout by the Iceman, Daniel Blancas. Daniel Blancas by knockout. And give a lot of love to Andre Graham, one tough boxer. No shame for the man born in Denver, fighting out of Arvada, Colorado. Tons of heart. You can't teach heart. Nope, you can't teach that at all. Blank is with that 6'4 frame. He is going to fill out, and he has the opportunity to have a wonderful professional career, and not a bad way to get it started at night. Paulie, when he started throwing, he started throwing with ill intent. Yeah, he see the Mexican time of hers, figure him out, and then overhand right right there, left right hand. Oh, no, I was two. Yeah. Or maybe he it was three, he would have been out. And we missed the third one. That was a straight right hand that took him out. That same right hand that he had been hit, getting hit. I tell you, man, I saw it on the ropes, man. Once he got hurt with those two shots over here, he just, he was not missing. And you know, the, the scary thing is Black is with his, with his his experience saw that. And he started loading up on the right hands because he realized, you know what, I can't miss this guy. He's staying squared in front of me. He's tired. He's, he's arm weary. I'm going to hit him with this. And he was able to finally step in and get him out of it. And there at the end, you saw him add the left hook to the right hand. Yeah. To help finish the job. Yeah. Get the yeah, job. He was, he, but he was already gone, man, right? He, he was on his way down. He took the left hook just for, just cause. Good measure. Yeah, but, <laughs> for GP, for general principle. <laughs> And as impressive as the finish is the fact that Daniel Blancas and Roy talked about it, had some big shots, reset, calmed down, got back into a stance, then went for the finish, and an absolutely tremendous finish it was. Yeah, and you know what? You see the psychological pressure, too. He realized he heard his man, and he started to really walk him down. And no matter what Graham was throwing at that point, Blancas was determined to stay in his face. And psychologically, that'll wear on you. You can't get a guy off you, and he's just in your face constantly. And I think it was that left hand that Blancas got hit with that really woke him up. Yep. So now Jacob Gomez and Pedro Hernandez will enter the pro box ring. After that big knockout, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Jacob Gomez, 20 years old. Both of his professional wins have come by knockout. His opponent, native of Puerto Rico, a Colorado resident, made his professional debut in 2006. Seven professional victories, two by knockout. He is Pedro Hernandez. Hernandez, guys, took 2013 and 14 off. Fought once in 2015. Then stayed out of the ring till October of 21. Now he fights again. He fought on February 12th. Lost in the second round. Right back at it here on Pro Box TV. And his opponent, the young Puerto Rican. Jacob Gomez likes to place his power shots rather than load up. He's got a baby face, no question about that. A lot of great fighters from Puerto Rico. That I do not have to tell any of you guys. With the official introductions, let's get it back to Michael Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, another future star for your viewing pleasure after Daniel Blancas did his stuff first, however. In the blue corner, direct your attention, please, to the record of 7, 10, and 1 from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 127.2 pounds in this super featherweight attraction. Put your hands together, please. Warm welcome for Pedro Hernandez. And our young gun. He boasts a 2-0 record from Caguas, Puerto Rico. You know Caguas. 
He weighed in at 130.2 pounds. Put your hands together and a loud welcome for Jacob Gomez. Super featherweights, four rounds or less. Your referee is Mr. Gene Del Bianco. You think of Cowboys, you think of the Codos. Well, the Codos are in the corner right there. That's Evangelista Codo. Yep. Well, that was a. Uh, I feel like that's the whole Codo team there. That when I fought Miguel Codo was in the corner. A family affair, right, Paulie? Yeah, yeah. Take a look at our tail of the tape for this four round super featherweight matchup. Age the big difference. Puerto Rico's Hernandez, 15 years the elder of his opponent. He will have a four inch reach advantage. Here we go. It's time to fight. Southpaw against Southpaw. Gomez in the black trunks with the red and white trim, blue trunks for his opponent, Pedro Hernandez. Very aggressive start by Gomez. Mean intentions right away. You see he's got that little crouch, that, that Cotto crouch here. You can see he's he's been taught in that style, except in the Southpaw, he's in the Southpaw stance. Great hand position, right? Nice check hook off that. Very skillful and have a lot of confidence. You can see that in his flat. So, and with Kodo's whole corner, you know they believe in this kid. Yeah, and it, just the, the fact that they're in the corner already shows, you know, they spits volumes. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's going to be well taught. The Kodo crouch, I like that, Paul. Yeah, you know, it's like the high guard almost in that crowd. So you, you have, the Kodos had a specific stance, you know? Very, very well, good fundamentals. And got a lot of leverage on the shot because of it. Good start for Jacob Gomez. Hands in perfect position, nice combination. And I wonder, you know, just because he's trained with Team Kodo, I wonder if he's a natural right-hander fighting in the southpaw stance because they liked to switch. Uh, Kodo, for example, was a left-hander who, uh, uh, who fought in the right-handed stance. They're very hook, they're very hook uh, dominant uh, the way they teach in Team Kodo. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Gomez's right hand, and he's he's very very educated with it. Oh, good shot! <laughs> educated with the left hand too, though. <laughs> 20 year old with great movement and a great start here. Looking to move to 3 0 as a professional. And he has a nice, strong check hook. So, like you said, I don't know if his right hand is his strong hand or his left hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, like I said, curious to know. Yeah, especially, like I said, with the with, Kodo, with, right? The Kodo, yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, the Cubans used to do that. In yeah, the all the they time. They switch their fighters to South Park. Nice combination for them. I love to see young fighters throw in combinations more so than just the one big bang. That's what we saw Hurt Wilder tonight, that one big bang. Good jab, too. Good body oh, shot. That was low. Wow. That looked low. Not low. Nah, he's not complaining. He's not complaining. He's not complaining about it. He's not complaining that it was low. So maybe. Get a chance to see the replay and turn around. Good Part body. of a combination again by oh. Gomez. And he goes right back downstairs. Yeah, some more. Look for it right there. Oh, Hernandez has to hold it on for life at, at the end of the first round. I, initially, I thought it was low too, but I wonder because Hernandez did not complain about a low blow when and, and it comes to his chest. So, wearing a cup right to the necklace. It really went into the head, though. Hey, we got you covered. That eye, you still get dropped with a body shot, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, that means that body shot was a go really hard, man. There's left. It looked like it wasn't really low. It was right above the belt. It was on, and even if it was on the belt line, it's way above the belly button. Yeah, exactly. you know? So the belt line is good if it's above the belly button. If the cup is above the belly button. 
Oh, it might be a little low, but like I said, the cup is so high, it's still a legal shot to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think he even knew that. He didn't complain. Usually, guys so will go. 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 Exactly. Round two. Good start for Jacob Gomez in the black trunks, blue trunks. Second His opponent, punch. Pedro Hernandez, right? My bad. Second punch right to that body like it's supposed to be. Yeah. You heard him last round on the body, you went right back, right, right back to it again. Yep. That's what you like to see, that consistency. And he finishing with that with a, a sweeping right hook. I think if he keeps doing that, he's going to find his man. With it. Also interesting, he's a southpaw, but he looks for that liver shot with the left hand. You see the right hand is doing that with the hook to the body. But much to your point, Paulie, is he a right-handed southpaw? Mm. Yeah, like yeah, it wouldn't surprise me considering the team he has in his corner. He's not only ambidextrous, he can use both hands equally well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very well, very educated by the guy. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a wordsmith, you know, Roy. <laughs> oh, there's that body shot again. That's going to really slow down oh, yeah. Hernandez, and it has already has. And, he, and you can tell Gomez is experienced because he knows, he knows what's working, and he keeps going back to that same body shot because Hernandez is just not defending it well. And that's what you want to see with future stars. You want to see them know what works and go right back to it. And really putting the pressure on him now. Forcing his will on him now. He's breaking his kid down. Good double hook to him. To the top and body and head. Good body shot. Antonio, he has a systematic aggressiveness. He's in control, but he's not letting himself be in any bad spots, although he is by far the aggressor. Oh, and again, cutting cut, cut, cut off the ring, too. I'm just about to say, cut off the ring, well. And you're absolutely right. I believe that's from good coaching, good training. This kid has poise. Even though he's aggressive, he's under control. That makes a dangerous fight. That punch, right by the back of the head, the right head, the right hand of uh, Hernandez. He's up again. He's here to battle. He's here to fight. Pro Box TV. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It is all over. Pedro Gomez. Jacob Gomez beats Pedro Hernandez. Body shots, Roy, were the big, big difference in this fight. He found a kick in the armor, and he stuck with it, and that's what you want to see. And that's great for the young guy to be so dominant downstairs you know what i mean and we need to train these young fighters that that body they think everything is here in the chair yeah. but that body does work it lasts and i tell you miguel Cordo was getting body shot stoppages early in his career too man i mean you can just you can just see the pedigree here you know with with, with this kid jacob, Go, jacob gomez i look forward to seeing more of him man because he's he's exciting you know they teach an aggressive style but at the same time it's fundamentally sound and it's violent you know, like they, they look they look to get you out of there and, and they mix it very well to the head and body. Very well schooled fighter. I, I can't I, I honestly I want to see him again. Paulie, much like Ryan Antonio you were talking about earlier, he's aggressive but he's systematically aggressive is what yep. you just said. Yep, yep. Violent but controlled controlled he's a Boy, controlled predator. Controlled yeah. destruction. Yep, absolutely. And Roy, it's hard when you're working with young fighters, it it's hard to get them to settle in and say, hey, Go and take your spots, but come back and reset. Yeah, because everybody wants to knock out. They want to impress the fans. They want to impress everybody looking. They want to the knock out. But they, what they don't realize is that if you work that body, the head will die eventually anyway. Yeah. So start from the body and work your way up. And, he, and he, that's what I mean. He built up to the knockout. Right, He's right. a 17-fight veteran, 18-fight veteran. This is only his third pro fight. I mean. Yeah, most definitely. Getting set for the official decision, Jacob Gomez, the winner, Michael Woods. Winner, two minutes, three seconds elapsed in round three by TKO, Jacob Gomez. Okay, this guy's got a bright future, guys. Three and all with three wins by knockout Antonio. You were starting to make a final point on young Jacob Gomez. No, I just like the fact that he uh, went to the body, he stuck with it, he was poised, really didn't let his opponent get in the fight. And this is what we look for, how you dominate these, you know, picked opponents or, you know, guys that they're trying to get to see what you have in your, in your bag. But I like the kid, very bright future. Outstanding performance. Let's take a look, guys, at some of his handiwork. 
it is now. You know, there's a, the body shots. We're, we're talking about it. It's interesting how he's a southpaw, but he was really targeting that left hook to the liver, despite being from the southpaw stance. And you're going to notice it right there. Oh, oh, that got in. And that was almost like he brought that one up. It started low, and it came up as, an, as a legal shot. It went into the gut. Same way I think he did it all three times. The same shot. Again. Yeah, again, yeah. All three times, the same shot. It's like he's stabbing you, man. Yeah, you know? beautiful shot. He gets very good leverage on it, too. If you know, look at the turn. Look at the look at the, the swerve he gets on the on his hip there on Everything, the turn, he's man. pivoting. Yeah. He's pivoting his body yeah. into everything. Great hand position, shooting it from the right place, turning, I mean, damage, not, damaging. Not arm punching. Exactly. But putting his body behind yep. every shot. Yep. And, Roy, like you said, you work the body, the head will come, and that's how he finished it. That's exactly how he finished it. And now we know why he had that swag before the before the bell rang, you know? <laughs> he knew he could fight. It's time to blast Daryl Valsing. Very explosive kid who's got a ton of talent. 2020 Haitian Olympian, lost in the quarterfinals, was the gold medalist at the 2019 U.S. Youth National Championships and Junior Olympics, just 19 years old. His opponent, Jorge Martin Garcia, 37 years old. First fight since last October. He has been finished in the majority of his setbacks. He does have Three wins by knockout, 13 professional victories. The Argentinian Garcia coming in on late notice to try to slow down the brilliance of this young man, Blast. Good pedigree, now it's time to see how he transitions. I was watching an old interview. They were talking about Daryl Valsane and a gentleman, Charles LaCapra, said that when he first talked to Valsane and he was a youngster, Glass said, I was at my house wrapping my hands in toilet paper, pretending I was Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> That's when he knew he had a special kid to work with. For the official introductions of this middleweight special attraction, Michael Woods. Another bout for your viewing pleasure about to kick off. I direct you to the blue corner. Middleweight attraction, six rounds or less. Hails from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Comes in with a record of 9-3-1. and one. He weighed in at 156.8 pounds. Please give a warm welcome to Jeronimo Sacco. And another future star. Roy Jones and Antonio Tarver have both said they like this guy very much. He hails from and represents Orlando, Florida. Record of 2-0 with one knockout weight in 160 pounds. Please give a warm welcome to Daryl Balsage. Your referee is Michael De Jesus. Middle weights, six rounds or less. We continue our future star series here on Pro Box TV. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight matchup. Blast, Daryl Val Saint, just 19 years old. His opponent, much his elder. And what a reach advantage, five inch reach advantage for Orlando's Daryl Val Saint. He is in the white trunks with the blue trim. His opponent, the southpaw in the black trunks. Class debut professionally with a 49 second knockout win. He has added with a unanimous decision victory, looking to move to three and zero here tonight. First fight scheduled for six rounds for the 19 year old. 
And what you like is in these type of fights early, he's already ran into one straight left hand. They're learning right away that they have to be responsible. So now he won't run into that shot again because he knows his opponent is not the best, but he's a guy who's a journeyman who knows how to hit you if you make a mistake. And you make these guys be physically and defensively responsible at an early age, and I love it. Typically, these journeymen, you know, they know their way around the ring. They know how to kind of maneuver through the rounds, and you know, they got to they have a good sense of timing. You know, they won't give you the, the full out 100% effort every round, but what they will do is try to walk you into those little traps to see if they can maybe make you make a key mistake to turn the fight around for them. And Blast, uh, you know, he's, this guy's going to try to confuse Blast. Blast got to stay composed and stay behind his boxing, aggressive boxing. I like that he's using both hands. Very rare that you see an inexperienced guy use both hands in their combinations. And part of the scouting report, Antonio, on Blast is one of his greatest strengths is that he doesn't fight outside of himself as he throws a big shot and lands here in round one. And he stuck, he stuck that shot in behind a counter. He made him slip, he made him miss, and made him pay. It was a right hand under, under body shot. It is all over wow. just like that. Another first round stoppage. For now, 3-0, 19-year-old Darryl Blast Bowsing. That was a counter punch off of, off of his defense. Beautiful. Staying Shot. within himself. Staying within himself, right, right? He made him reach, then blasted him. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Superman 2-0. <two nothing. laughs> I want to see that. Although, you're on, you're on the board with Dakota Crouch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're on the board. <laughs> the nice old, like he stepped back, made him miss, and ripped it right up. And then he threw up afterwards while he was still standing, which was a finisher for sure. But in boxing sometimes, that one's going to be a little close. Yeah, man, I always found the one from the opposite stands, that little uppercut to the gut worked very well. Southpaws are using our right hand, and the right hand is using our southpaws. You got it in close, especially on that little counter. You know who did it well? For lack of a better example, Antonio Vasily Giro. Oh, yeah. He did that very well. Yeah. You got to get a lot of knockouts that yeah, left hand. Yeah. On the right hand, there's better. What a right hander could do against a southpaw. I mean, what a southpaw does against a right hander, a right hander could do against a southpaw. It's a miracle. I actually learned to fight left handers by watching left handers, you know, and watch what they did to right handers, you know. I want to see that we get that replay. replay. Yeah, I'm excited to see it too. Last living up to his moniker once again. To make it official, let's get it back to Michael Woods. Decision is in, rendered in violent fashion. Winner, two minutes, four seconds into round number one by TKO, Blast Daryl Bastard! Bell Singh. All right, Roy and Antonio, I, I'm sorry, but I know you guys are jealous of his hair. <laughs> Nah, not me. Nah, got, okay. Hey, me and Antonio got out of the hair game a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was out of it, but I went. I took a trip to Turkey. <laughs> I got back in. <laughs> not only is he skillful, he's got a lot of personality and a very bright future. From wrapping his hands in toilet paper, to move in to get three and oh with two knockouts as a professional. That was what made him reach with that right hand. Came right back up under that. That was the shot that I said that could be deadly. Yeah. Because I know a guy that got disqualified for that <laughs> shot once. Got to be really careful. There's that beautiful body shot. And as he's going down, he touches down. Oh. You got to be really careful of yeah, that. Yeah. So, but it's a great shot. I mean, I'm glad he got the victory. And after he looks at it, he'll understand. And he'll know I got to be a little bit more careful. Because once the job is done, no need to redo it. Right. Didn't right. Terry Norris get disqualified twice against the same guy? I think but so. I think it was the same guy. He fought this guy, Santana. <laughs> Two times, knocked him out the same way and got disqualified both times. And then I think he beat him the third time. I, I remember I was a kid, but if I remember correctly. So great matchups in our Future Star Series. Some outstanding finishes and some big hearts shown. Here at the ProBox TV studios, Tampa, Florida. We will be back shortly right here.
for our Contender Series, and you do not want to miss it. Back to Tampa, back to Pro Box TV, coming up next.
It's Probox TV. You know what time it is? It's time to fucking fuck! Tampa, Florida. Beautiful downtown. Tampa, so scenic. And so is our home. Pro Box TV Event Center as we get set for four great matchups in our Contender Series inside the White Sands Event Center just outside of beautiful Tampa, Florida. We get it started in the main event later tonight is a good one. Nine and oh, Cesar Francis, born in Panama, fighting out of Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York, faces Mohamed Mamoun. In the co-main event of the evening, two big heavyweights collide. Germany's Christian Thun and Orlando, Florida's Armin Sands. Armin Sands, 11 wins, nine by knockout. Cruiserweight matchup, six rounds scheduled. Naji Lopez looking to move to 4-0, and looking for another knockout victory. His opponent is that man, Anthony Stewart, fighting out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we get it all started with a six round super lightweight matchup. Josiah Shirley, Orlando is his home as well. He is three and oh, with three knockouts. His opponent, Giovanni Bennett. To get things started, here is Michael Woods. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. And that goes for the fighters as well. I direct your attention to the blue corner. This is a super lightweight fight. Six rounds or less. Repping Joliet, Illinois. He weighed in 140 pounds. Please put your hands together for Giovanni Bennett. And in the red corner, Another young gun, future star, has a record of 3-0. and Repping Orlando, Florida. He weighed in at 139.4 pounds. Please warm welcome for Josiah Shirley. Your referee is Gene Del Bianco. Instructions coming now. Our tail of the tape for this, our first fight. Here on our Contender Series, Orlando, Florida's 20-year-old uh, Josiah Shirley will have a 7-inch reach advantage on 22-year-old uh, Giovanni Bennett. Here we go! It's time to fight. Josiah Shirley, 3 and 3 knockouts, is 20 years old in the blue and pink trucks. Bennett out of Chicago in the black and silver. Shirley's first two professional fights and professional victories were right here inside the Pro Box TV Event Center. Very poised fighter Shirley is. His opponent looks pretty poised himself. <laughs> He's trying to get off to a fast start. Looks like it's going to be a, a very technical fight. Both guys seem to have some skill at the game. Yeah, and Benny so seemed to sort of start to study Shirley a little bit, letting him be aggressive and seeing what kind of attack he brings. I like the way Shirley's snapping that jab. Yeah, he's not just pulling with it. He's snapping it every time. Speaking of snap, there's some good shots by Bennett. Good timing. A 
lot of times early in, in the start of your career, I wouldn't like my undefeated fighters fighting other undefeated fighters. No, you wouldn't you know? like it early because you never know what the other guy's going to bring. He has to be broken. He's never been broken before, but surely throwing some good body shots here to break him, so that's a good thing. But you know, again, they're on pro box. Right. They don't play with him. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> There's the A side and the other A side. Exactly. And I say that because even if a guy has some experience, maybe some losses, it's hard to take a guy Oh, Of course You know is. what I mean? They're going to fight to protect that. Yeah. Shirley's mom from Guyana, South Africa. His dad is Jamaican. He fights out of Orlando, Florida. Oh, boy. Yep. Two finishes in round two, one in round four thus far in his young career. Guyana's had some good fighters through the years. You know? Remember Terrence Ali, Six has Lewis, Vivian Harris, oh, yeah. Wayne Braithwaite. He got some good power, I tell you that. A good snap on Shirley Shots. He's been yeah, a bit busier. Better defending well, but he's just not getting off enough, and it seems like Shirley could win the round just on, on activity at this point. Shirley's trying to use the body shots, though, to open up the head shot, which is very smart. 58 amateur fights for Josiah Shirley, 56 and two record. Took up boxing in high school, loved it right away. Obviously, he has stayed with it. He's going to learn a lot tonight, especially if this guy sticks around for a minute. If Bennett sticks around for a minute, he's going to show Shirley a few things that maybe when you get out there, hit a guy who don't go anywhere, it's going to be some resistance there. Yep, it sure is. There's already some resistance there. You gotta keep your poise when there is. First time for both fighters scheduled for six rounds. Coming in behind that jab, right there. Then there's an overhand right, right down the pipe. That's the one I said that but it's going to teach the young guy that you got to be careful early. Watch what you run into because if you run into that, that could have ended matters. Yes, yes. Good timing by Bennett. There. It was. It was probably the best punch of the round. It just Bennett was not busy at all. And Shirley was able to snap off some good shots. He may not have landed them as cleanly as Bennett did there, but you know he partially landed enough shots to carry the round. I think. Bennett definitely said, I'm going to get my fill out right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett made his professional debut against Antonio Daniels Jr. back in November at the Motor City Casino in Detroit, Michigan. And he said he upset a guy in that fight, right? Yeah, he, ended up, he, he got the upset. They ended up changing it to a no contest. Okay. But certainly a great performance by Giovanni Bennett. Oh, good right hand again. Oh, my goodness. Right hand to the body in the uppercut. Good start to round two for Giovanni Bennett. Let's see. You guys talked about that confidence when our opponent gets it. Let's see if Bennett gets that confidence or if Shirley stays on and pounces on him. Sure, Shirley ain't giving it up. I can promise you that. He's got to do something to Shirley for Shirley to give the confidence up. Shirley is a seasoned amateur fighter who knows how to be a winner. Yeah, and he actually got more aggressive after that. Exactly. That's what you do as a seasoned guy. You know that if a guy gets off on you, you must get that back to keep his confidence down. That's some of the things that Wilder didn't get to learn by not having an amateur career. You want to stay the boss of the round. Exactly. It's a psychological thing, too. Marcellus Wilder, younger brother of Deontay, fighting earlier tonight, was defeated on our Future Star series. This is the first fight on our Contender series. Mike Wahlberg, Holly Molinaji, Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver, great to be with you. And me and Tarver had a question here. You got a guy that's 20 and a guy that's 22, one that's 1-0 and oh and one that's 2-0. and oh. How are they on the Contender Series already? Give <laughs> <laughs> me a, a sneak peek. We, we, looking, at, we looking through the crystal ball. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, Bennett is an economical. He's, he's, he's not an easy guy to deal with, man. I'm telling you, for a second-post fight. Hey, you, know, you know why, Paul, not to cut you off? 
because he's defensively responsible. Yep. He's not going for it. He's not going for the feints. He's not yep. going for those wild shots that surely is there. And even defensively, not only is he responsible, his positioning is not bad, so he remains dangerous. So he can counter he can off counter, the counter, so he keeps you honest. And to be honest with you, these guys already at this stage really actually do look like contenders. They don't look like guys who just started. They both look like they know what the heck they're doing. Yeah, these two know how to fight. Man. Yeah, big time. No good for that. Ooh. Counter by Bennett. That's what I mean, man. These, these guys both, these are good boxing matches and two, two good fighters. Right now, the fight is still a physical fight. Around about three, four, you know this is their first six round. In three, four, five, going to be very challenging. Not physically, but mentally. Yes, sir. Charlie turns out for, guys. Yep. Charlie turns out for. Nice combination in that round by Giovanni Bennett. He's in. Oh, right hand, right over top, followed by another uppercut right there. Those were probably his best two punches. Quadruple right the hand. Yep. And you know what it was? Right here. Surely he's not used to anyone firing right there. He oh. got comfortable. Yep. yep. But Bennett was like that he wasn't having it. He said, this is a real fight. I'm here to win. Giovanni Bennett, Josiah Shirley. Six round super lightweight bout to get things started here on the Contender Series. Shirley in the blue and pink trunks. Black and silver for Giovanni Bennett. Like right, right there, Shirley cut off the ring. He didn't follow Bennett to the other side. And then got out. You can see the great athleticism of both, but especially that of the kid, Josiah Shirley. Answered right back by Bennett. Bennett says he's a spoiler, and he's living by that right now. He's definitely trying to be a spoiler. But you gotta love the aggression by Shirley. Confident as well yep. for a young fighter. Antonio, I'll start with you. How do you have the first two rounds score? Well, I got Shirley winning the fight, um, but close. I mean, I don't know what the judges are actually looking for. Um, but I think Shirley's ahead by two rounds. Right? I got Shirley ahead by two rounds, but it's not looking good because now Bennett is starting to stalk. And that's what you don't want Bennett to do. You want to keep him on the underside where he's feeling like the opponent, not like he is the man. Bennett, right now, he seems to be acting like the man a little bit. Still. Bennett has some moments in, in each of the first two rounds where he landed some probably the, the better shots of the round, but it's been Shirley carrying the pace of the round and some nice combinations and nice shots. and. Just, you know, having control of the overall rhythm of the fight. So you have him up 2-0 as well, Paulie? Yes, but I could see round one being a little closer. Okay. I, I, I probably tardy not to give him the rounds. He was so much busier. Right. Like Tony said, like Tarvis said earlier, the problem you have fighting another undefeated fighter is he has to be broken. And this guy hasn't conceived to being broken yet. Guys, maybe it's the hairdo, because uh, <laughs> he's got the same hairdo as Val Saint. Yeah. <laughs> Blasting the kids, sporting the good dudes tonight. It's important to see if Shirley can stick behind his technique. Not get too wild right now because things aren't going exactly like you want. You're not landing those punches. Stick with the technique, it'll come along. The body language in these later rounds, too, you start right. to see the body language change a little bit. So we got to see how, he, how composed he can stay throughout these rounds when this guy doesn't go anywhere. I've seen Shirley either his whole career or two out of the three fights, and this is the best I've seen him look. Ooh. So good, good uppercut there by Bennett, and again, Ben is showing he's a capable guy. No question, he's bringing it tonight, guys. He got Nick with three uppercuts. <laughs> <laughs> but he just gave back with one right hand. Nice body shot, good flurry there by Josiah Shirley. Every time Shirley gets hit, Good. He comes back and answers right away to show him, okay, you land up, but you ain't do nothing. I'm still in charge. You so gotta love that. Good mark of a young fighter. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also, I, I've said it's the best I've seen him look, but that's no discredit to Bennett. Good shot there by Bennett. No discredit to Bennett. Bennett is forcing the best out of Shirley. 
your other opponents I saw Shirley against, I didn't really get to see a lot. Bennett is forcing Shirley to raise his game by Bennett himself having a, a game that's raised and high. And again, this round four coming, you still got two rounds that's been uncharted by both these guys. Yeah. And going from four to six ain't easy. Yeah, I tell you. yeah absolutely. They can't get distracted at all by the full moon there. See the champ, John Pascal, just made an entrance. He got a big date on Pro Box TV. May 20th against Meng Fen Long when we make our global debut here on Pro Box TV. Had a chance to visit with Jean Pascal yesterday, and he said, Don't call it a comeback. I am returning. One of the most resilient fighters we've seen in recent years. I mean, John Pascal, no matter what they do, he keeps standing up. You got that right. Yeah, he knows how to make an entrance, too. <laughs> Round four. Bennett and Shirley getting us started here on the Contender Series. Those records, you know, are are early. They're, they're, they're very infant. Like, but Roy, with this style and this matchup so far, maybe somebody knew a little something about putting them on this contender series. They damn sure did, because these are both two young veterans. Oh, yep. This great got by Shirley. That was a sick combination by yeah. Shirley. Great body shot by Shirley, too. And you said the right thing, combination. He didn't see that little quick uppercut in there. But he I'm, snuck that in. Man, that's creative, man. He came around with the, the side body shot with the right hand, and then after that, he came up with the elbow. That was Mike Tyson. Like, but Mike Tyson used to do it in the pocket. Shirley entered the pocket and threw the combination. Very, very smooth. You can see Shirley's forcing his will right now. Let's see what Bennett reaction will be. Will he fight back or will he fold? The body shot's kind of seeming like they're going to make him fold. I don't know, but it's not looking good for him. Shirley has won all three of his professional fights by knockout. And I like how Shirley cuts off the ring. And putting that body shot to work, you hear me? Yeah, you don't see some savvy stuff there that you usually don't see young prospects develop until later on. The good body work and the cutting off the ring very well. Definitely looking like a contender here. And Antonio, that Jajaius Shirley is one of the young men who trained full time here at the Pro Box facility and give a lot of credit to Mark and Asa, the head trainers who work with him on a daily basis. Oh yeah, Mark and Asa are doing a great job here at Pro Box TV. And I just want to thank them for, for allowing us to tap in every now and again. Because a lot of times, you know, trainers love their fighters jealously. And you know, they don't like too many people messing up their soup and their sauce. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> a little protective. Right now, it looks like Shirley trying to load up with that right hand. I oh, 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 my goodness. <laughs> Told you that body shot was causing havoc. But he yeah. snuck that in. It was yes, perfect timing. Perfect, timing. Yes, perfect timing. Beautiful body shot. Bennett showing a lot of heart right here. A lot of heart. Antonio, that's what you said. The old, they don't want to give up the old. It is all over. He stopped it. Oh. Big oh. body shot for Josiah Shirley. Great stoppage. But... Was Bennett ready to fight now? Yeah. I mean, he was yeah, on I mean, two feet. He yeah, didn't seem like he yeah, was suffering at all. Yeah, and it's not a headshot. Uh, I don't know. Man. I wanted to see that continued a little bit, Paul. I think yeah. we could have seen Shirley do a little bit more to get Bennett out of there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would have still been hurt to the body, but, I, you know, he wanted to fight. You you know, you don't get up from the body shot if you don't want to fight. You know? Yeah, yeah. Man, could have been an early stop. I would have liked to have seen Shirley finish it yeah. maybe in a little bit more dramatic fashion. Yeah, and it's not like... It's not like it was a headshot where you're like, oh, better be safe than sorry. So I, well, but this is what y'all got to realize. You don't see him arguing with the referee, so he ain't bad. <laughs> no. But the body <laughs> shot, but a body shot will always make a coward out of you. So he, he, you know? he ain't mad. He ain't mad because the ref stopped. Uh, he ain't up there raising his hair right now. Yeah. But that's because he, he, he's still feeling the no, body no, shot. That's what I'm saying. So he's not mad at all. Uh, <laughs> But I, here's with the I, you, sometimes you see guys get up at like nine and a half and like and and, and you know they they make like they wanted to get up but they really didn't because if he wanted to get up you would have got up at eight or nine you know so, so he didn't do that he got up at like eight you know yeah but in that in that situation you want to bounce and show the referee that you still got yeah. legs yeah you understand me so if you show the referee something like that then maybe he'll allow you a hard body shot it was time perfect yeah. surely timed it perfectly yeah yeah 
And he feel it. He got some good. He got some good leverage on it too. Yes. Man, but surely, wow! You can, I mean, you can see you can see the pain on Bennett's face when he took it. As soon as he got hit. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul, you and I have talked about how there's that shock in that one or two second delay. Yeah, there was no delay yeah. on that one. Yeah, because he just knew it was coming. Yeah. He, knew, he, he opened his mouth like, "Yo, man, it's about to be bad right here." <laughs> it sounded like he got shot. Yeah, yeah. it did. <laughs> he got hit it did. Yeah. You see, he didn't go down for the extra split second. You know, you that's go. when he went down. That's when he felt the pain. That's a great point. <laughs> Let's make it official with Michael Woods. Thank you, Mike Goldberg. We have a disposition in this fight, and it was a well-fought fight. I enjoyed it tremendously. Your winner, 231, round number four by TKO, Josiah Shirley. Another win. By technical knockout for 4 0, 20 year old Josiah Shirley. A body shot that finished it, and a beautiful connection to say the least. And he walked him into it. Boom! Ooh, just counter right off her. Man, that was a beautiful shot. Landed perfect timing, everything. Snuck it in. Just beat him to the punch. Literally, right? Yeah, beat him to the punch. Boom. Oh. Yeah. He's like, ah, right, you got me. You what got I tell me. guys about getting caught with a shot that you don't turn all the way with? Yeah. You notice Bennett didn't turn all the way with his yeah. shot. Josiah yeah. did. And he got the best of it because he turned his whole body into the shot where it's been through more of a arm, arm punch, punch and right. it took him out of the bad swap as that called yes it. yes but for those young guys man who don't believe in going to the body we've seen it twice tonight invest in that body work our contender series from tampa florida will resume shortly we will be back with the Magic Men and Superman.
We welcome you back to our coverage of a great night of fights. Tampa, Florida, Pro Box TV, Mike Goldberg, Paulie Malinaji, Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver, Josiah Shirley got us started in spectacular fashion. And now we are set for a six round cruiserweight special attraction. Naji Lopez, who trains here at the Pro Box facility, 3-0, and looking to move to 4-0 and against Anthony Stewart. With the official introductions, let's get it back up to Michael Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The action commences again. We have a cruiserweight attraction, six rounds or less. First, I direct your attention to the blue corner. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He reps with a 6-1-2 and two record. He weighed in yesterday, 192.2 pounds. Please give a warm Florida welcome to Anthony Stewart. And in the red corner, a lot of you know him already. Repping Ellenwood, Georgia, brings a 3-0 and record with three knockouts. Future star extraordinaire, 192.6 pounds yesterday. Please give a warm welcome to Najee Lopez. Your referee is Michael DeJesus. Our tail of the tape for this cruiserweight bout. Najee Lopez, 3-0 with those three knockouts, just 22 years old. Anthony Stewart, 40 years old. Still has a lot in the tank, he told us. Three reach inch advantage for Lopez. Here we go. It's time to fight. Najee Lopez in the white with orange, black, and red trunks for Anthony Stewart. Six, one, and two record. Four of those wins by knockout. Lopez, the Puerto Rican, fights very long. One finish in the first, two in the second. 3-0 with three wins by knockout. Stewart said he wouldn't lay down, and he's not laying down. Not the most talented guy, not the most experienced guy, but he does have a big heart, and he's out here to try. Yeah, from the way he was talking, we'd expect a lot of character out of this guy. He's, I expect he came to fight, and from his body language, he looked confident there, like, he's a, he, like he's had, he, had, he feels like he has an ability to stay in there. A little, could be a little more relaxed, but nonetheless. Good body shot. Followed up by, by that nice hook, Antonio. Yeah, with Najee Lopez, you see the guy comes out aggressive with some beautiful boxing ability. And you can see why everyone is so high on him. He's sticking that jab out there. But again, we want to see what he looks like at six, seven, maybe eight. And that's when we're going to really determine and notice what, how high is the ceiling that Najee Lopez. Well, we may not see it again. Good shot. Nice. Trying to finish Stewart early. Stewart's lone professional loss was when he was a victim of a TKO. Lopez just teeing off. Beautiful. And Stewart has to figure out how to transition from that defense to offense because otherwise, even if he's blocking, he's gonna become a punching bag for Lopez. He's gotta give Lopez something to think about that might be coming back or that does come back. And right now, he has not done that. Now he's on shaky legs right now. Very shaky legs right now. And, An and Anthony Stewart, guys, is coming off back-to-back -back first round finishes of his own he just wants to not get finished here in round one and had a lot of experience in like tough man contests and everything and you can see talent wise he doesn't have oh hard but again Lopez. he's a tough customer right he just took those body shots he is one tough customer he, he, said, yeah, he said yesterday that he'd take a few of these body shots he wasn't lying was he they wasn't at all because he's taking some good ones i mean some really good ones Lopez had his 2020 Olympic dream derailed by a swollen eye in the trials. Competed as an amateur for both the U.S. and Puerto Rican national teams. Oh, 
Lopez back on the jab now. He was getting very aggressive, but now has seen that Stewart may not go away quietly. So he's back on this on the fundamentals and the jab and keeping his balance and staying calm. Stewart a lot tougher than he seems. As far as taking stuff. Tito Lopez Sr. started at age 13. He lost his father December of 2020. Tito Sr. was a 201 pound representative. Najee's brother, Hakeem, is 12 and 0 with nine knockouts. Professional light heavyweight. Round two. Great start for Najee Lopez. Yes, way to come out using that jab early. You know you got a guy that's pretty tough. Use that jab, see if you can set up on him like that. And I'll just make it work. Stewart's just going to show Najee Lopez that he's not going to go away easy. He's in for a fight, and it might end up being a bullfight, but Stewart is definitely game, as Roy talked about. Tough as nails. Not many people will stand up in there under those body shots that Najee is hitting with already. Yeah, you have to good leverage, man. Just landed a counter jab as well. I love the rhythm on his jab right now. He's changing direction, changing speeds. Okay. He landed the right hand finally. Just the fact that he's able to, been, been able to hang around has already forced Lopez to, you know, back off the all-out pressure, all-out aggressive combinations and and go back to setting stuff up. Now he's getting aggressive again. When he gets close, though, those body shots get in there. They are devastating, too. And he's ripping those body shots. That's the difference. And if Stewart doesn't give him something to worry about that's coming back, it's just going to It's not going to stop the aggression of Lopez. Lopez needs to have something to worry about if he's going to step off the gas pedal a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. You can see, and you can see, guys, and, and Paulie, there, there's not a lot at all coming back from Anthony Stewart, and it's because of the damage that Najee's done. Yeah, it's a great point, Mike. And also, you know, the, the, the fact is that you can't throw your shots and also keep them home and protect yourself. And he, he doesn't feel comfortable not being able to protect himself. Good body shot. And, oh, my oh, goodness. Good you can hear those. Looking to finish 40-year-old Anthony Stewart once again. And he's throwing those shots perfect. He's not loading up. He's allowing his motion, his speed, to create the power. Do a game as they come to son. He took those shots and came right back with his own uppercut. Yeah, tough man contest. <laughs> Better he, man, you can see it. He won a tough man contest for a reason. <laughs> he is tough. And my guess is, not only did he compete in them, he probably won a handful. He said he dominated most of them. Yeah? Got over 70 tough man fights. Wow. He said most of them will come in drunk already, so that helped <laughs> <laughs> They're not too many similar to Najee Lopez then. This is when I put up my surprise face, Antonio. They <laughs> <laughs> were smiling after that round, took a deep breath, smiling. Lopez still on the combos, hit by the shot, followed by a body shot and the uppercut that missed, another body shot and uppercut. Beautiful, beautiful punches. Beautiful. 
and then he's still breaking after he threw, after he threw his punches. He had enough sense to break left and right. Get off the give line. this guy, get off the line, and give this guy some attention. First time, Nachi Lopez will fight a round three in his young professional career. Najee Lopez in control of this fight thus far. White trunks, orange top, and the black and red for 40-year-old Anthony Stewart. And that says a lot for 40-year-old Anthony Stewart. He's 40 years old. The last guy Najee fought was a 30-fight veteran, and he couldn't last this long with Najee. I mean, you gotta like what you, you gotta like the fight to, to be 40 years old like Stewart and be in these kind of fights. He's not looking for a way out. He's looking for a way to punch back. He sure is. And that Alex Theron that you were talking about, Roy, he, he was 23 and 6. Yeah. So he had a lot of experience and a lot of success. If yeah, Baron found the exit, the first chance he got. <laughs> there were, if Stewart wanted to find the exit, he could have found it already in this fight. But he's, he's going to be willing to stick around. That's what I'm saying. Lopez hat, go around. That's what I'm saying. My hat goes off to him for being as tough as he said he was. He told us he was tough. He told us he wasn't going to lay down. Ooh. He just landed a good left hook right there. I mean, that says something. He's 40 years old and still out here trying to fight like this. Oh, Make he's all hard. Giving Najee work, you know? Young man, too. Najee, yeah. again, young man. Najee, a young veteran. <laughs> a young, a young <laughs> hefty veteran. <laughs> look how he's looking for those shots. Look how he's hunt, hunting in there. Look at that. Use those elbows right. Keeping his head off head, of him. Yeah. Yes. Keeping his head off line. Doing some beautiful things in there. Doing a lot of good thinking in there. Of course. Antonio, this is great for Najee, though, as all you guys pointed out. A guy that won't go away. This yeah. is great for his learning curve. I mean, we call these lessons. Lessons that can only happen within those ropes. Right. Experience. Hey. Oh. Exactly right. You know, the Mike Tyson there, too. Right hand and then up, right hand uppercut. Oh, good left uppercut. Well, well the, one thing. Uh, Stewart hasn't seen anybody box like this in the Batman contest. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if this is a lesson, this is a school of hard knocks right now. <laughs> round three, scheduled for six. The first six-round fight, at least on paper for Najee Lopez, was his win last month right here at the Pro Box Event Center. Finished that fight at 33 seconds of round two. Oh, smooth shot there. Man, he just turned so nicely on that body shot. I like the way Najee Lopez changes speed mid combination, too. He kind of is flowing, and then all of a sudden steps on the gas pedal. Paulie, sorry, Roy, that is such a key, and Antonio, to, to change your tempo, because if you don't, it doesn't matter how great it is, it becomes predictable. I mean, you're absolutely right. But what I'm seeing now, Najee, like, he's really fighting out of his talents right now. And he's looked good doing it. Yes. I saw I saw him standing two feet from the guy, but he broke two or three times, changed his position. He's growing right in front of our eyes tonight. Roy, you'd like to have tape. You'd like to have a fight that you could truly go break down and critique, don't you? Yes, you do. You need that. You look at it, you can see how to make yourself better. If you don't have that, you never know how to make yourself better. Here you see Najee Lopez using a very good punch selection, overhand top, followed by a right uppercut to another body shot. I mean, it's just a beautiful way of mixing up his punches. He's doing a beautiful job. Looks like a fully tuned in veteran. Overhand right, follow by uppercut, then a body shot. Not many young guys do that. Not many young guys have sense enough to follow those head shots with beautiful body shots. And, and at the various angles as well, he came over the top, came, then came underneath, and then went to the body with the other hand. And to have the balance to do that speaks volumes. Yep. The fight continues thanks to the toughness of Anthony Stewart. Round four. Najee Lopez, 22 years old, born in Atlanta, has lived in suburban Ellenwood, Georgia, now trains here full-time at the Pro Box facility. Showcase a beautiful jab tonight. Followed by good right hand just then. Nice. And these shots are getting between the guard and Stewart. Stewart would be having his hands up, but he's not blocking everything there. He can't. Now his hands are too fast. 
and that jab is educating tonight. Oh, good counter right hand. He in his bag right now, champ. Oh, oh man. He was tough as nails, though, son. That is why Stewart doesn't get off that many shots, because Lopez is so quick to counter any, any offense that Stewart throws that it, it starts to make Stewart more and more gun shy. But credit to him, kudos for, for hanging tough. Well, he's only lost one fight in his professional career. And he won about 70 tough man contests, from what he told us. Six victories, four by knockout. The one loss was a stoppage. But Anthony Stewart saying, all right, I might be 18 years older in Canada. That's the drinking age. <laughs> Last check. We're 19 now. But he's taking everything that Najee is delivering and still standing right there in front of him. And Najee being smart, taking a little off. Oh. That's a really good shot there. And again with that left. Huge left hook. Wow. They have to start the zone and stop him. Tell me what. <laughs> he, he was right up at the ropes, too. He's too tough for his own good. They might be Down fast. again. With the right hand. Yep. Big heart. Huge heart. Referee Thomas is saving from himself right now. But he has no chance of winning this. And he don't have the wherewithal to move around and use nope. his legs. Nope. Najee still landing powerful shots. Big oh. shots by Lopez. Credit. Credit Bennett. My goodness! Right. Able to get a deal time. Wow! It's fine. Yeah. Hey. It is all over! Great stop. Yes, the referee did. stops the fight. Yeah. Najee Lopez is 4 0. I tell you, give credit, kudos to Brooks Stewart, man. That is one tough guy. Oh, tough Alex. as nails, Jimmy. And he, didn't, he wasn't going to stop. If they didn't rescue no. him, they were not going to stop. He was not going to stop that. But you know, some guys always tell us they're tough in fighters' meeting, but he proved it tonight. I mean, this guy took some blows tonight, but credit to Nagy. He looked beautiful tonight, man. He really stepped his game up tonight with his composure and control. And that's what we want to see. We want to be able to see him going up rounds to where we see what he's got. How how, how deep does his bag of tricks go? You know, how, how far exactly. can he go? And you know what? There's a big bag of tricks there. Big bag. Roy Antonio talked about it a bit. We saw the growth right in front of our eyes again of Najee Lopez. He stayed with his game. He stayed composed, even though he was hurting him frequently. He stayed very composed and very smart. He kept the body work going on. The body work is kind of what helped get him down. He backed off a little bit, then speeded up again, and that's what hurt him and sent him down for the first knockdown. Very educational win for Najee Lopez. The referee stops the fight to make it official. Michael Woods. We have a decision rendered in violent fashion. Winner, 239 elapsed in round number four by TKO. Hands together now for Najee Lopez. The proud Puerto Rican. 4-0, four, oh, four knockouts. One in the first, two in the second, and tonight he finishes Anthony Stewart in round number four. Going to the bottom, followed that hook up there, speed that hook up, changed the speed that hurt him very, very bad, kept the pressure on, and that caused a knockdown. Another left hook. For that, you see him come back again. As game as this guy was, he was still trying to punch while he was getting hit like that. And now he just kept pouring it on, roughly finally saw enough, and called it a day. Great stoppage, just too much. Too much talent. 
too much skill, too much of everything from Naughty Lopez tonight. Michael Wood said his nickname's Hype. You could call him Hart Anthony Stewart. After seeing that performance, Antonio, I believe him that he, he's <laughs> won. He's won the majority <laughs> of his 70 <laughs> tough man you fight. To, you, got, you have to love to fight to be in a fight like that. It's where it's just not going your way. Right. You're 40 years old and you have, you have no desire to come out of it You're, unless somebody takes you out of it. Like, you have to really enjoy fighting. And you can tell that's a guy that enjoys fighting. <laughs> If we were a hockey player, Paulie, we would want him on our line. Yeah, absolutely. He'd be like Dave Semenko <laughs> protecting Curry and Gretzky back in the day. Absolutely, man. Good enforcer. Yep. That man would make Marty McSorley proud. <laughs> Great performance by Najee Lopez. It is heavyweight time. Christian Thun, Hammond Sands, both men. Impressive record, 7-0. and oh. The German, five wins by knockout. 11 wins, nine by knockout for Orlando, Florida's Sandman. And they are going to battle in a super heavyweight battle as Amron Sands makes his way to the Pro Box TV ring. Born and raised in the Bahamas, his dad from the Bahamas, Bahamian, his mom, American. He was headed to play college basketball, suffered a torn ACL. He wants to succeed in this sport, and he's done a great job thus far. Take care of his mom and his sister, and be smart with the money he earns. And here is Christian the Hurricane Thun. His Dracula cape on. Trained by Sugar Hill Stewart and his chief second is Michael Holbert. Stewart is overseas with, of course, Tyson Fury, getting him ready for his April 23rd fight against Dillian White at Wembley Stadium. So not here tonight, but what a great trainer to have if you are the Hurricane. With the official introductions, once again, here's Michael Woods. A lot of you folks have been waiting for this one. It's the heavyweights. A lot of poundage in this ring. Gonna direct you to the blue corner. This one is set for eight rounds or less. Repping Orlando, Florida. Record of 11 and one. 282 pounds, please. Warm welcome for Amron Sand. And in the red corner, direct your eyes and attention, please. Repping Miami, Florida, born in Germany. Weigh 271.2 pounds, comes in with a record of 7-0. Christian Thun, like thunder. Your referee is Gene Del Bianco. tape for this heavyweight co-main event of the evening guys all i have to tell you is they are a combined 553.4 pounds here we go it's time to fight sands with the reach advantage 81 inch reach it's on the 75 inch reach Sands of Southpaw as well. Yeah, coming out Southpaw, Paul. A lot of, a lot of Southpaws tonight. Yep. He's coming out of Oh, good it. shot by Sands. You hurt? You hurt? You hurt, hurt already, yeah. He got caught cold. A lot of times these big guys need time to get, you know, into the fight. Yeah. And if you <laughs> jump on them early, you can catch them sleeping, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And right there, you can see Thun took a big left hand on when he was up against those ropes. Thun's got that basketball size as well. Fights somewhat upright, the old European style, if you will. 
Still a work in progress, but his movement has improved every fight. 271.2 for Christian Thun in Sands. Came in at 282.2, a local favorite fighting out of Orlando. Sands a very mobile guy to be so big. Yes, he is. Good feet, and this could be problems for Thun. If he's not able to cut the ring off and run him into some big shots. Yeah, he's, he's mobile, and he, he changes range a lot as well. Ooh, headbutt him in the middle. See, it's that breaking, it's that breaking right in front of Thun that might give him problems. He's moving that target, giving the big man a lot to think about. Thun looking for the straight right hand himself. He's, oh, good, good uppercut. I was about to say that was probably what he could find is that, that, that little uppercut there because a lot of times what you're seeing Sands doing is ducking his head as, he, as he's flying in. Oh, got caught with a left hook there. He might be hurt. Thun delivering a great combination. Sands got a hold. Sands he got to survive. If not, he could. Thun is coming off a first round finish. Looking for another right here, oh, right now. The upper got through. This would be a. What? What is the rip? In the rack, he was going to break it in the world. his mind. Sand got a punch. If Sand don't punch, it's going to get stopped. Good stop. Hit it! It's over! Over! Just can't complain about like that. You can't not punch, punch back. back. Yeah, you can't not wow. punch. Wow. Yeah, punch back. Wow, what a finish. I thought this was going to be a good fight, guys. It, it would have been. Punch back. It was been, for but, Christian but, Thun. It, it, I think it would have been, but Sands has to want to fight. Yeah. You know, like, he, he, he didn't throw back. You know when you don't throw back for 60 unanswered punches, the referee's bound to stop the fight, even if you're not crazy. You know Thun might have some pop in those powers. Oh, no. You know, in his punches he, because he felt it. He hurt him with something. Yeah. He I, had to. No, he felt it. Even a, some of those shots got through the gloves, you know, so he was feeling them, but... You I'm can, saying but to freeze him like that. Yeah. He had to no, no. hurt with Ini something. No, initially he definitely yeah, hurt yeah. him. Yeah, initially uh, to put him in that position, he, he def definitively hurt him. Because it looks like Sands was having a good round. He was. He was to that point. And he to was. To that point. Wow, what a great stoppage by Thun. Man. And Thun is, uh, I actually speak to him in Italian. He's half German, half Italian. He's known as the, the, the tattoo on his back. He speaks four languages. Wow. You can ask him to say tall as hell in English, German, Spanish, and Italian. Spent yep. the first six years of his life in Germany, mm -hmm. then moved with his mother to northern Italy. Yeah. As you know, Pauly, mom worked at a U.S. Army base. Mm -hmm. Christian got a little American culture at 13. He moved to the U.K., to London, started boxing. <laughs> Well traveled. <laughs> well traveled indeed. He right, speaks very good Italian. He's, uh, his mother, he told me, lives in Venice. But looking back on this win, I mean, this guy uh, really looked good for the beginning half of that round, but Thun just shut it down, man. Yeah, yeah. Big, big heavyweight. I mean, I'll tell you one, most of us Italians ain't that tall. That's the German side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Polly's, Polly's got it now. He's up too. To make it official, another win by knockout, Michael Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a disposition. Your winner, two minutes, 22 seconds elapsed into round one by TKO, Christian Well, you can see why Sugar Hill Stewart believes in Christian Thun. He, huge fan, of course, of Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Massive influence and a massive win tonight. AC Thun's a point of pressure on him. And right there, he was landing. He wasn't really landing much, but it was enough. Those uppercuts sneaked up. The referee pulled and started stopping in. He gave him a break that he shouldn't have gave, and he still hasn't thrown a punch since the ref did that. Yeah. So the ref was giving him a chance to punch back. If you don't punch back, the ref is going to stop you. Yeah. If you're not going to punch back, at least hold right there. The ref going to stop you. Buy yourself some and, time. And, and I don't doubt that he was hurt, but the fact that he was kind of riding with the shots shows you that he wasn't crazy hurt. He could have thrown something back if he wanted to fight. If he wanted to show the ref he was there, he could have thrown something back. I think Thun took the fight out of him, and he just said, you know what, if I stay here, I might not get any hurt. And the referee was going to jump in and stop it, and I'll take my check and go home. Not only did Paulie verify that he speaks 
very well in Italian. He is an Italian Golden Gloves winner. Yeah. So you want to talk about well traveled? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he box box in every country he's been. You got that right. And tonight, right here at the Pro Box TV Event Center, another win. This one again in the first round by TKO. That's two in a row in the first round finish. Coming up May 20th, we make our true global debut. Ming Fung Long, one of the top five light heavyweights in the world, will be fighting for his nation, China. Pro Box TV is available in China. He told us yesterday this will be the biggest fight of his life, and it will be the most watched by his own countrymen, which makes our Pro Box TV platform so special great athlete a lot of respect for his opponent and that man is the two-time world champion Quebec Kwai is home for Jean Pascal who said don't call it a comeback I am returning I never lost my belt in the ring I am returning on May 20th so guys if you don't believe Pro Box TV is going to put together massive matchups I guess you're wrong because in May that's exactly what's happening yeah, uh, John Pascal, one of the, uh, like I said, one of the most resilient champions. Every time he get knocked down, he stand back up. This guy has fought for the title a few times, been in the ring with legends like Bernard Hopkins, you know, so has all the experience in the world, and it's going to be a great fight come May 20th. Yeah, Mong, Mong, a star from China, a guy with a lot of pedigree, a guy that, you know, the, the Chinese fan base and, and the fan base here in the U.S. are also looking forward to seeing him achieve big things. But against a guy like Jean Pascal, who's already achieved those big things, a two-time world champion, it'll really be a clash of styles and a crossroads matchup. And Roy Jones Jr., of course, with the uh, promotion very close with John Pascal, uh, a little brother you said yesterday, Roy, but this man is a pleasant man to talk to. He had a big smile on his face. He, he's wearing a Yankees hat. Jean Pascal put on a hat with the Chinese flag, but he brings a lot of athleticism to the ring, doesn't he, Roy? Yes, Fella Ming Meng brings a lot of athleticism to the ring. He's very tall, and he really wants to win. You could tell the day when I was holding the miss for them both that he's very competitive. And he's not here just to lay down. He's definitely coming in and coming at Pascal. So he has a large order to fill. It's the biggest fight I think that I've seen a Chinese in in my whole time of boxing. So I'm looking forward to wow. him doing some big things. It, it, it truly is when you wow. face John Pascal. It, yeah. It's and, the biggest fight for a Chinese boxer. And he's a big star in China, but with a win over Jean Pascal, he puts himself at stardom on a worldwide basis because Jean Pascal has a big reputation on a global scale, and Mang is expected to get that far as well. And Antonio, it's funny, like Paulie said, he's a big star in China, but not as big as that star will shine when he fights on May 20th on Pro Box TV, where the entire nation can watch it. Oh, man, that's going to be incredible. And we know that they support their people. So we can expect a big turnout on that pay-per-view. May 20th, our global launch, Pro Box TV tonight, our main event of the evening. Super lightweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds. Mohamed Mamoun, the problem against Cesar Francis. 9-0, six knockouts, fighting out of Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. Mamoun is promoted by none other than Roy Jones Jr. He thanks you, Roy, for believing in him. So you give us the scouting report on Mohamed Mamoun. Very good fighter, very big heart, a winner, loves to win, loves to fight. I uh, was just looking for an opportunity, so I tried to present him with one. He's taking advantage, 22 and four, three knockouts. Home is France. Took him an extra hour to make weight. So let's keep an eye on his gas tank as he takes on the Panamanian. Cesar Francis, 9-0, six knockouts, as I mentioned. He said, Panama is in my blood. Brooklyn is in my heart. For our main event of the evening, the official introductions from Michael Woods. Number of you have been waiting for this one. It's the main event. I think it's a coin flip fight 50-50. I direct you to the blue corner. 
comes in from Brooklyn, New York. He's of Panamanian ethnicity. He weighed in at 140.8 pounds, has a perfect record of 9 and 0. Please give it up for Cesar Francis, the Rain Man. And in the red corner, with a record of 22 and 4, weighed in at 140 pounds yesterday. Record of 22 and 4. He comes in from France. Please welcome. Mohammed Mimu. Ten rounds or less. Michael De Jesus is your referee. You know what I expect. Such goals if you want to, not go back to the corners. Such goals. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds. 34-year-old Mamoon against 31-year-old Francis. Francis with a five-inch reach advantage. Here we go. It's time to fight. The Southpaw, Mohammed Mamoon. The problem in the red trunks, representing Panama, Cesar Francis, the Rain Man. We've got a lot of right-handed versus Southpaw yeah. matchups tonight. And this is a good fight for the Contender Series because these two guys are 31 and 34. They're at a point where they've got to make it or break it, and you can't ask for a better opportunity because they got great opportunity in front of them right now. Somebody has to take this opportunity, and somebody got to not take the opportunity. We'll see what happens. And when you're in a 50-50 fight, right, you know, it, it always puts you in a position to excel to a higher level if you get that win. You know, you get your run-of-the-mill opposition as, as a prospect, but reaching that 50-50 level, you start winning those 50-50 fights, and that's what people start to take notice of you and demand that you get in those, you have those big fights, demand that the bigger-name fighters start to fight you. And Muhammad told me he wants to fight anybody. He don't care who it is. He'll fight any champion right now. He don't care what. He just wants to fight. So when I called him about this fight, he was like, you know what? I don't care who it is. Bring it. Francis coming off a win back in October against previously unbeaten Jose Roman, who was 11-0. It was at the Berkeley Center right in his backyard in Brooklyn. Eight-round unanimous decision victory. Mamoon very upset that the fight a year ago did not go his way. It was a unanimous decision setback against 20 and 1 Tyrone McKenna, although some of the analysts that night, Roy, did not have the same scorecards as the judges. No, he definitely was robbed that night. And uh, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's not because he, he wasn't my fight at the time. I wasn't promoting him at the time. And uh, he definitely got robbed that night. Made his debut in 2010. His first 14 fights were in his home country of France. And I also like the fact that here at Pro Box, you're giving two guys an opportunity. One guy wants to fight the best fighter he can find. The other guy wants to fight the best fighter, including any champion he can find. So these two guys both want it. They realize their age, their conscience of their age, and they're ready to go. You know? So it says a lot. This is going to be oh, oh, good body shot. They got the cut there by Mamoon also landed a right hook too. So they exchanged shots. Mm -hmm. See the France is a very good punch. Yeah, France has good great hand position and great, great fundamentals here. He keeps the shots short even on the counter. Very tall at super lightweight. Yeah, yeah. It's Caesar Francis. Ooh! Oh. Oh. Again, the same uppercut. Time did again. That was a counter, a counter uppercut. Yeah. Off the move. Off the move. Yeah, Stepping big. back. Boom. Yeah, that's a big shoulder. You notice how he's dancing around. He's showing that he wants to fight. Oh, yeah. He's he the other guy. Yeah. It was a flash knockdown. Yeah, yeah. Punch you didn't see. Yeah, it was. His big, broad shoulders on Caesar Francis. He's got more range. And even on the uppercut, a guy like this is going to have more range to find you. And he snuck it in there. But to be able to know that that round was close, could have went either way. Yeah. And he pulled that knockdown off to get a 10-8 a, a round. Mm -hmm. Big for him, Francis.
Mamoun's last few opponents were 21 and 1, 12 and 0, 30 and 2, 22 and 4, 21 and 0, 21 and 3. Roy, I can see why you believe in the guy. He's a fighter. He doesn't duck and dodge nothing. He wants to see bring it. That's just what he is. Yeah, Mike kind of guy, and that's the luxury for a promoter or manager yeah, to have a guy that's ready and willing at any time. Can you see the knockdown here? He threw left to the body, got caught with uppercut right afterwards. It was a counter uppercut that he didn't see coming. He didn't see coming at all. That was a little surprise. And, 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 and the goal that you made up some points about Mamoun, the level of opposition he's fought. He's all fought some tall guys. Sam Megginton is a tall guy. He won the European title off of Sam Megginton. He also fought Victor Postal in a, in, a, in, a, in a fight that I actually worked at, I remember. So, you know, this is not, although Francis is a tall guy, Mamoun has faced this kind of height and this kind of height disadvantage and has had even success against it. And you fought Sam Egerton. Yeah, but he's an aggressive, Egerton is more of an aggressive uh, guy, so he's not going to use his height as, as much, and Mamoun was able to outbox him. Right. Postal was more crafty, obviously, an ex-world champion, and uh, Mamoun had less success, so I'm curious to see how the adjustments have been made in preparing for Cesar Francis. Well, I seen Mamoun, I looked on the tape, Mamoun got his jaw broke in round two of the fight and finished 10 rounds and won the fight. Oh, wow. So that knockdown is definitely not going to detour him. Well, four losses, Roy, has never been finished. And four of those, out of the four losses, I only think three of them truly were lost. That's, yeah, as we mentioned earlier. Sky TV analyst Matt Macklin said at the end of that fight, the cleaner, harder shots were coming from Mamoun. He's a clear winner. And uh, Mamoun, as Roy mentioned, not happy at all with the way the scorecards were. So looking to get back to his winning ways here in our main event on Pro Box TV. Mamoun taking a different approach this round. The high guard trying to walk down Francis. Got to get close to the taller man, make him fight inside. And also possibly bother him psychologically by staring in his face. Yeah. And put some pressure on him. Yep. But I've seen a shot that Mamoun has strong. It's that wicked right hook. And when Francis leaned with that right hand, he's available to get countered with that right hook. I like what Francis is doing, though, with touch tap, 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 right. Maybe opening up a little bit of the, of the guard. Keeping Mamoun busy and, and looking for the counter opportunity when Mamoun opens up off one of those touches. Yeah, a lot of times with Cesar Francis, he will look to lead, but he is a dangerous counter puncher, Paulie, as you talked about. And he's so low. Yeah, and a lot of times when a guy's touching like that, they're looking for counters. I, mean, I used to do that a lot when I was fighting. If I was touching you, I was looking to draw something out of you so I could counter it. And you see that, ooh, that Francis is looking for stuff like that. That was that the, the exchange. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 No surprise that Francis's favorite fighter is Roberto Duran. Yeah. Well, I would say most Panamanian fighters will tell you that, right? That's exactly right. Big Tommy Hearns fan as well. Looking at this, looking at his frame. <laughs> exactly. Tell why. Yep. <laughs> tell why exactly. Ooh. Is that hook by Mamoun? Much better round for Mamoun. Yeah, he did close the gap in that. Yeah. And had some moments. This changed the geography a little bit in that round. You know, both landed some good shots in the round, but at, Mamoun changed the tempo of the fight a little bit in that round. And, and uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if he can continue to do that, because that can like, logically play on a guy with only nine pro fights. Staying in his face like that. Good back and forth at the end of that round. Got yeah, Mamon landed the hook. Had a body shot. After the bell, but he excused himself. Had Francis may Francis may not want to hear it, but Mamon <laughs> excused himself. Once you started, you can't stop it. Fight shaping up to be a good one. Yes, after it that, is. Yes, after that is. first round knockdown, I like the way Mamoun rebounded in the second round and stayed in Francis' face. And both of these fighters look like they're, like they're in tremendous shape. Yeah, they are. They ain't leave much meat on the bone. But. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, Mamoun had to make weight after. Life's left camp yeah. by Mamoun. About an extra hour, right, Paulie? Yeah. 
kick from 144 to 142. That's good left hand landed by Mamoun just then. But Francis still doing some smart things by constantly tapping. That's how you keep yourself busy and keep your momentum going. Francis was trained by his uncle Francisco back in Panama. Now his son Francisco Chico is his trainer. Cesar Francis came to the U.S. at age 12. The rough roads, Brooklyn. Yeah, I know, I know, I know Chico and the uncle. I know yeah. G. Joe. <laughs> I, know, I know them both. I grew up with, uh, around them in Gleason's gym in New York. Harley, who you don't know in New York that boxes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm showing my age. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of foot wrestling there, too. Guys stepping on each other's feet, which does happen for the lefty versus righty matchup. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Ooh. So trainer-wise, he's in good hands, Francis, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of experience there. You got a good team. And they believe in him. Now, Muhammad has a lot of experience himself. Fought for the French team for a long time. Uh, friends with a couple good fighters and has been in the gym with a couple good fighters for a long time. So he's game and he knows how to win. One thing about friends, he, he, I, I, I understand what he's doing here with the touches, trying to draw oh, something sure. out of him. But he needs to start also initiating a little bit too. Like right there with that good body shot because you touch, touch, touch. Mamoun is not giving you anything. And, and Mamoun is actually the one landing these shots. Yep. So you're going to have to start initiating some of it, too, and then mix in the touches in between. If you keep it strictly touches, like that right hand is a good one, too. If you keep it strictly touches, you're going to start to, the guy's going to start to get your timing down. Mm -hmm. Especially if he's not biting nice, on him. Right. Nice left hand. And that's the right hook we've been talking about. And again, the geography of the fight changed in round two. And it has stayed there. Good body shot by, by Francis. Another, and another one. one. Okay, and had one. Oh. Yep. oh, man. And they, these things do happen with lefties versus righties. Francis dove in with that body shot. It was definitely accidental, but, but it looked like he's swelling the heels. Yeah. He said, let's go. Keep it going. Final 30 seconds of round number three. Francis is staying on that body attack now. There he is. Good defense. Ooh. Good hook on the mark. Starting and with the right hand. hand. This is a good fight, I'll tell you that. See, Mamon is fighting out of his defense right now. He's blocking most of that stuff, and then he's countering. But he's looking for Francis to open up. That was the hook. Low blow. Oh. We got ourselves a fight! <laughs> nice round. Very nice round. Man. I'm wondering if the, the body attack Francis is investing in right now will pay off dividends later. He's playing some good shots to the body that Mamoun is not catching and shooting back on as, as often as, I, as I'd like to see. So he's getting a lot of free boost to the body. Mamoun is doing well with the headshots and not really taking a lot of them and even landing his own. But he's not really answering back on the headshots. He's giving them away too freely, in my opinion. So I'm wondering if that doesn't stop, if that's going to start to slow down Mamoun in the second half of the fight. Yeah, you're not answering back on the body shots. Yeah, not answering back on the body shots, exactly. Two thousand one, right? Everything goes bad right here. You got a two low throw, then a hit, but everything. Two thousand one. <laughs> you get two fouls for the price of one right here. Exactly. Yeah, low blow right here. Low blow and then a little hit. Then a hit, but wow. The old one. The old one too. Yep. It's not exactly the high low that we're looking <laughs> yeah. for, right? We have moved to Ooh. round number four. He's been worn a couple of times. You're going to see because he keeps doing it. He's been doing it for the longest time. He's whipping it like a bowler. Yes, yes. The Mamoon's cup is above the belly button. Both of them are. Both of them are. Ooh. That one was the, the one question a moment ago was right in the middle of that belt line. Pretty much in, in between Ooh. the I and the K on his trunks. Good, Good body shot by Mamoun. Yes. That one actually moved Francis. Yeah, it did. Francis wasn't expecting. Sometimes you hit a guy with a body shot enough, you remind him to go to the body like that. Yeah, and Mamoun has been reminded to go to the body this round. And it's becoming a real tough fight. 
Yep. But again, I, I, I like the plan by Mamoun here where he's staying in, in Francis's face. Again, there's a guy with nine pro fights only. Staying. Mamoun coming on now. He's well, and, and Antonio Mamoun is oh. known for being a slow starter, if you will, but a calculator early to see what he's up against. And now he's starting to score. It looked like he has a real good feel of Francis right now. And he's starting to get busy first instead of reacting. Good combination by Francis. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Good punch selection. See, right there, I think Mamoon waits a little bit too mm -hmm. long. And he allows Francis to be the first one, and then he takes... Oh, oh big shot! Big shot! Oh. He threw at the that face. Was looking oh. to finish it right here, right now! Same time they threw. Wow! Mamoon landed shot. first. What a shot. He was up that knockdown. But he got to be careful. But I'm running on that crazy. He ran that crazy. I think Mamoon, he's feeling it. Yeah, that count careful. left. But he be oh, careful. what is the referee doing? He wasn't oh, waiting in the neutral oh, corner. He wasn't Wait. in the neutral corner. You got to be careful. You're not running down now here. He's exactly. oh, he got to get out of there. Oh, oh, that's the moon. That's a slip. He's hurt still. Yeah, but the referee got to be careful. He's hurt. But Mamoon got to be careful, though. Mamoon just got to place these shots. Take your time. Careful. Yeah, you got to be careful. Take your time and place them. Don't punch yourself out. There you, there you go. Take your time and place them. Don't, don't punch Francis. yourself out. Francis staying caught. Oh! I'm saying, gotta be really careful here. Right in right front of us. Francis, Francis still there. there. Francis there. still there. I'm saying, gotta be careful because Francis Punch himself out. Right? Oh, good shot. He hurt, guys. Ten seconds on the clock. Gotta be careful. He still could knock. Anybody can knock somebody out right here. Yeah. Good body shot. Now, if he don't get him out of here, how much? That's what I'm saying. Gotta be how really careful. He knocks himself yeah, out. Exactly. And the crowd oh. is into this one now. What a round! <laughs> I thought they both threw at the same time. Mamoon landed first. I'm, I'm curious for this replay. Francis had a punch on the way. Mamoon landed first. They both they both detonated their shots at the same time. But Mamoon's was sure I landed first. You're going to notice this on the replay. Mamoon's got to not punch himself out and be careful because Francis is still dangerous. He's still dangerous. Highly dangerous. I hope Mamoon has something left on That was a straight left hand, followed another straight that was, left hand. That was the follow up. Yeah, the knockdown. Was, that, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was after the knockdown. Yes, that's see what he got hurt at. There he, there he slipped on the punches. Yeah. So he didn't. They wiped his gloves off, but he had already been down. Knocked down right here. Boom. Right there. Oh, 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 yeah. Francis was cocking his whole left hook to throw. And I tell you, he almost got in with the same shot right at the belt. He, 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 he takes off his left hook a little bit, and he doesn't keep his right hand up. At the belt, the last round, the moon just missed the same punch mm -hmm. as Francis was loading up a left hook again. The moon comes right back out in the defensive stance, and he's fighting off of his defense. He's letting Francis expose himself, and he's countering. This is what we love at Pro Bond. Got that right. Outstanding. Oh! Again. Both of them hit each other. Francis each other. ripping. Both of them hit each other. Really. I'll tell you what Francis should be doing in between these little touches. Should be fainting, either with his yep. feet or yep. with his shoulders. Should be fainting. Should be drawing stuff out of Mamoon. Because just the touching is not drawing the traps out of Mamoon. It's not getting the reaction that he wants out of Mamoon. Maybe dropping a, a little leg faint or a foot faint or something in between these touches. The only dangerous thing for Mamoon right here, though, is that he's going from stop to go. And Francis is already in motion. So sometimes a guy like that can beat you to the punch because his punch, his body movement is already in motion. He's yeah. going to go from stop to go. Huh? Oh! It's okay, again. Another counter right and a big left hand. He put in the flurry here. But he got right. It's right. It's right. Now, Francis still it's dangerous. It's still dangerous. You gotta be careful. It's that counter shot. You got a shot by Mamoon. You gotta be careful though. Francis 9 and 0. Mamoon four losses, but has never been stopped. What a fight. Good defense. Man, if if Francis can survive this somehow, yep. this, he's going to be, yeah, he's going to learn from this fight. Yep. And I'll tell you, Mamoun keeps timing Francis because Francis is not fainting in between these touches, man. Oh. You, you can tell when he's still loading up because he gives a hitch a little bit when he's going to load up a shot and when it's not one of these touches. So Mamoun is able to time it. He's got to faint in between all these touches. Mamoun is conserving a lot of energy fighting like this. He's walking him down. He's not really utilizing a lot of his conditioning. He's setting up for that right counter again. 
Oh, that was oh, low. Low. Low, low. Extremely that was low. Extremely low. Huge low, That was Trinidad versus Vargas type low. Oh, take your five minutes, see? Right here. Take a point. He can be too smart. He can be too tough for his own good. Take yep. your time, bro. Yep. I, think, yep. think, I think you think Francis is the beginning of the tire. He don't want to let him come up. Yeah, that's what I'm about. Francis may have needed the break. He don't want to take the five minutes. Let him fight. Yeah. Because Francis may need the break more than Mamoun. I tell you what, Francis just gave back the extra point he got yep. in the yeah. first round for the knockdown. Well, he already gave that back with the knockdown itself. That's true. <laughs> I, I gave an extra one back just for, just for principle. Antonio, Cesar Francis's stance is, is not normal, quote unquote. A little different, isn't it? Yeah, he's standing a little straight up, but he, yeah, he's shoulder width. He's shoulder width. He's not really too wide with his stance. I think he has a beautiful stance. Oh. Uh oh. A lot of different versions of beautiful, right, Antonio? Yeah, Mamon, I think Mamon thought he got fouled. He did, he did, he did. What oh, was it? He thought it was low blow. Low blow, okay. What a fight we got here, y'all. Yeah. So good one, guys. This is what I like to see. Hey, hats off to the matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> was it Chris Glover? Who's the matchmaker? Ruben and Chris Glover to match me. <laughs> they said good open hook, followed by a straight left by Mamoun. Another left hand. He landed the left hand quite a few times in that round. I'll tell you, it's a credit to Francis that he gets out of the round because oh, he got hurt so early in this Here's round. a low blow right here. It was way, well, way that was low. That was like almost under the cup. Yeah. That was almost intentional. <laughs> that might be two. He could have got two points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's trying to imitate the rain against Ken Buchanan on that one. <laughs> that is Mohamed Maboon. His opponent, Cesar the Rain Man Francis, 9 0. Round six. Our main event, super lightweight fight, scheduled for 10 rounds. Mike Wilber, Paulie Malinaji, Roy Jones Jr., and Antonio Tarver. He got his little blow back. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Roy. <laughs> 1-1. One, one. Now it is worthy of note that for Mamoun, his last 10 fights have been either 10 or 12 rounders. Six 10s, four 12s. And that's why I think he's pushing the issue here. Yep. Because you know, this guy hasn't been, did a lot of 10 rounders, so he's hoping to wear him down. Coming off an eight rounder, Roy, the longest of his career. So I'm going to keep in mind, Mamoun has had the most success with shots on the, coming from the peripheral. He came with a right hook that hurt last round, and the other, I think the first, the other round when he got the knockdown, it was a, le a wide left hand as well. So shots coming from peripherally have generally been more successful for, for, for Mamoun in this fight. It's because Francis, to me, stands up high at close range and doesn't protect himself as well as he should with his gloves. And he's not seeing the shots from the side. And another thing Francis is not doing, he's not using his reach and height advantage. You know, Mamoun is able to get in there and break in to his defense, right like that. He's in too close. A lot, a lot of foot fighting, if you will. They're step the Southpaw Orthodox matchup, of course. And Antonio, that's a little bit of what I was talking about. The stance is beautiful, but the legs and the leverage sometimes for Francis, you'd like to see a little bit more, wouldn't you? Well, you know, they got the ABCs of Southpaw Orthodox. You got to be on his outside foot and all that. But they two stepping, they fighting, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. You're not really thinking about that, but if you can get advantage with that footing, it is to your uh, best interest. And Antonio, you made a point that, you know, Francis is not using his height correctly, He's staying not. at close range. But one thing you got to say about that, Mamoun made the adjustment. After yes, the first is. round, after getting dropped, he made a concerted effort starting in round two. And you could have seen it, he just staying in Francis's face. And that can play twofold. That can play from a physical perspective and also from a psychological perspective. Like you can't get a break and can't get this guy out of your face. Now it's up to Francis to make the adjustment back, and he's not been able to. Right, that's what I was going to say. One adjustment deserves another. Exactly. Absolutely. And Roy Mamoun, very thankful, appreciates the support. He talks about all the years of sacrifice and hard work, ups and downs, and they're paying off for him. 
modern day. And, uh, and again, Roy, that's why you're a believer in Muhammad Mamou. Yes, I am a big believer in him. It looked like the left side of his jaw is swollen again. But I'm a big believer because he'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. And they're putting on a great show here in our main event. France against Panama, and they're talking. They're really, that they understand one another, but they aren't talking. That's right. I was thinking, I was thinking, Roy, if it's Christian Fun, four languages he's going to understand. These guys, you don't know. The international language of the fist. That's it. The story is that Cesar's mom heard a report that her son was bullying people after they moved to New York. So she sent him to a boxing gym where he was given a lesson in humility. Oh yeah, that'll do that for you. But he came out strong in this round. He yeah, shot, a, yeah. shot a big right hand and landed it. It's not the head back of the moon, but a moon right back on the plane, right in his face. And again, look for the foot wrestling and foot jockeying for position, because especially at close range with a lefty and a righty, there is a lot of foot stepping. I know another outstanding fighter from Brooklyn who eventually found his way for humility in a boxing game. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Boxing will teach you that for sure. <laughs> Good body shot by Francis. And it reminded my mom to go to the body. And a great recovery for Cesar Francis after those powerful flurries from the moon a few rounds back. Francis coming out and taking control over this round so far. And it's, it, more it, so, it's more so the moon not. Oh! oh. God. That's that kind of check right here. <laughs> And they both landed they one of them. Landed, the yes. Paul, you were saying it's more so Mamoon not doing what? It's more so Mamoon just not, not getting his hands off. But now that, that check hook got to give him some confidence. He's, he's getting all some shots now and backing up Francis. Francis had enjoyed a, a positive part of early part of this round. Looks like Francis found another weapon. The weapon. He threw that right hand and whipped the left hook in there. And it caught Mamoon right on the jaw. Changed the speed of it. And also, I think he's got to add punches to the combinations. You know, he's he's not getting through with the ones or twos. Maybe the third and the fourth one will get through. And Roy mentioned earlier that Mamoon looks like his jaw is swelling in an awkward way. Yep. And he even hinted on it may be broke again. I'm not sure. I had my jaw broke. I tell you, if you keep getting your jaw broke, maybe you're not biting down correctly. Then we got to tell his mouthpiece. Sometimes yeah. those be the mouthpiece they don't have foam-fitted mouthpieces. A tough guy, nonetheless. Yes, he is. Yeah, that's a hard injury to fight through. You would know, Antonio. You also went 12 rounds with, yeah. with, with the broken jaw. I went four rounds, but it's <laughs> but <laughs> like 12. <laughs> My mom went like eight rounds, I think eight or nine. Francis having a more solid round this yeah. round, though. Ramon had that stage in the middle part of it where he got back some points. So you wonder about the jaws you guys talked about, but also the gas tank of the moon, who had the big flurries early and had a pretty tough weight cut. Well, he has a world of experience. He's been deep. He's used to those deep waters. We don't think he's going to have any problem conditioning-wise. But uh, he's trying to get Francis out in that deep water right now. Yeah. Francis in the uppercut again, too. Oh, look at their feet. Watch the feet at this range. Watch the feet. There's been a lot of ebb and flow in this fight, back and forth. But who's going to take control and grab, grab a hold to this fight? Yeah, better round for Francis. Remember yeah, when yeah. he started to get comfortable with that pressure, and Francis there was able to get new back, some, get back some, new, yeah, make, get back some neutrality and make it his kind of fight in that round. Yeah, that, that jaw don't look good, as Roy mentioned. Oh, they putting ice on it. It could be broken. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think it's broken again. Yeah. And that could also maybe be a reason why, a factor why he's not throwing as many punches as well, yeah. Right. Goldie made another point with the weight cut. Could be a couple of things. But again, these are those fights that make or break fighters and champions. 
yeah. and to weather a storm like this and then come out on the victorious side, yeah. it really gives you confidence that you can conquer the world in boxing. Caesar hit on the hook in the back of the head. And he turned, he turned into he that one. Yeah, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't intentional. No, not at all. Round number eight. Second time in the career of Cesar Francis that he has been in round eight. He's coming off that eight round unanimous decision win at the Barclays Center back in October of last year. His other eight rounder, he finished in the first. Good by the center. Gresham starting early in this round from the morning. He realized he let Francis get off to the better start last round. Yeah, I think uh, Mamoun knows he's, he needs a big convincing round in order to hold tight in this race. Yep. The visible swelling on the left side of the face of Muhammad Mamoun. Antonio, you, you talked about it. How does that affect you when you know you have an injury that severe? I mean, if this if his jaw is broken right now, the pain that he's feeling every time he moves, every time he catches a punch, it's excruciating. You know, quitting in my mind for a split second. But then I realized that it wasn't in me. And you know what? After surviving that 12th round, I knew then I had everything in, in me to be a champion. Roy, does it force you to, to change your attack, change your style? Yes, because you're protecting it? Yes, it does. It forces you to change your style, not throw as many punches because you want to keep your hands at home to not get caught in that jaw again, you know? And bad injuries will do that. Yeah. The moon is getting inside of Francis, but he's not throwing that right hook that he had success with earlier. Yeah. I think he needs to go back to that. But give credit to Francis for making the adjustment. You see the bounce in, in his step a little bit, and he's able to change the angle. The moon has not, the moon has changed his style since the first round. He doesn't punch unless he's planted. So if Francis stays planted, the moon is able to have success. If Francis gives that little bounce and changes angles, it's Francis who's able to have more success. The moon got to get down after he throws that left hand. Do a left hand and stay straight up over here. That's very dangerous. But Francis is a really good puncher. Oh, there it is. Great counter by Muhammad Mamoun. And what was interesting about that counter, the hook kept Francis from getting away, yep. and then it kept him there for the left uppercut. Because Francis was trying to escape. Ooh. Another thing, they tell you to move to your left against the southpaw, but when, when the southpaw has a hook, good hook like Muhammad Mamoun, you'll be walking into it. Right. <laughs> and he'll move you back into the left hand as he did about 25 seconds ago. I see. I still think that, that that right hook is his best weapon, but I think he needs to throw that left hand first, like that, and then blind him. Oh, oh good shot. Even the right hand, Francis answered that one. Yeah, Francis Long, you seem like you're out of the way, but you're not, because right. Long doesn't seem like he is. Add in the injury, the, the, the jaw is definitely messed up, and, and Roy talking about how he's keeping that left hand pinned as much as possible in the defensive style. Still, though, was able to get some combinations, Roy, late in that round. Yeah, they had some good punches late in that round. Good fight, good fight, good round for both of them. Man, this is a close fight. This is a very <laughs> great main event. <laughs> a lot what a night of fights we've had. And like you said, ebb and flows. You know, it's, it's been a lot of changes in momentum and even adjustments made by the fighters and the corners. Moon might have taken the big shot from Francis very early in the fight, guys. Could this be what? Yeah, that might have done. That might have worked. That was, that was a knockdown. That, that was a knockdown. Yeah, that might have been the one that hurt his jaw. You know what? He had his mouth open a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I saw his whole mouth. And, and he turned his head that way too. That angle. That was that knockdown where his glove touched. A great, great so job by, great job by our guys in the in the tape and in production. So strange. I was bit down when I threw a punch. It's so strange. It's, I don't know. It came naturally to me. I don't. It's so strange. <laughs> Got to ensure that doesn't bite down when he throws. Oh, oh! Left hand, sharp. Walked. Francis walked right into it there. Francis still being smart going to the body though. It's a very smart thing. First time in round nine in the professional career. 
of Cesar Francis. I'll tell you, the frustrating thing about Francis is, you know, I feel like he could throw a third and a fourth punch to those shots. He throws them nice and short and compact, so which, and he's balanced. He stays balanced, which, which is what you need to continue the combination. And Mamoun a lot of times keeps his gloves at home, so you can continue the combination, but Francis just doesn't go past one or two hard punches in a row. That was on that jaw. Yep, and he's making he make Mamoun keep his hands home with those short taps. Antonio, oh. turn the table a little bit. You know, as Roy talked about, that it was on the jaw. If you know your opponent has got a busted up jaw, as we know Mamoun does, do you go and attack it? Do you set things up from that? Well, I'm sure uh, Francis is trying, but Mamoun right now has good defense. He has his hands high. He knows he's injured. He's not letting the guy know how hurt he is. I mean, here's a man that's focused, and he's in this fight to win it. And it takes a hell of a heart to go with a broken jaw especially, in a big fight like this. Especially yeah. to come forward, especially to come forward and, and make the fight, which is, which, which, which is the way Maroon has to fight in order to win the fight. It's and and the well, if it happened in round number one, yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Judges are going to have a tough job scoring this one. A lot of guys would have packed their bags after that first round. Leave it. Knocked down and we'll broken. Leave it. You will leave it. There's a flurry from Francis. And that flurry allowed him to finish with a hook. It was a scoring shot. And it was really no power on the first three, but that last shot hurt. Oh, low blow again. But that one, that one, that one pushed his head down on the hook. He did. The moon is nicknamed the problem. He doesn't have a problem dealing with. Low shots, busted up jaw. Mm. He's just headbutts. I'll tell you, with the swelling on the face of Mamoun, he that, that beard might be a protection oh. from the referee and the doctor. Oh, oh yeah. shots by Mamoun as Francis tried to get out. And Mamoun has done a good job of catching Francis on the on the exit because Francis stays up a little too high. Oh, the shots by Francis there. Final seconds of round nine. You can see the experience of Moon playing for a factor in he it. Run, you know, he can't run to the shot, though. He gets the points back every time. You can't, can't run to the shot with Francis, though, with Francis mm -hmm. You see how he understands if he takes a shot that he's got to get the points back. He gets right back in Francis' face. He doesn't let him enjoy the little, the, the little moments of success. And try to take it away from him even psychologically by throwing punches back on top of him. You can see the difference in experience there because, you know, Mamuna, uh, the 26 fight veteran, fight veteran who's, who's been in there with world champions like Victor Postal, an ex-European champion as well, you know, he, uh, uh, is Mamuna. You know, you can see the little factors in experience uh, coming into play in those moments. But again, there's a young fighter in experience, but he's stepping up to the plate. He's rising to the table. Yes, he is. Francis. Yes, he is. And if he can pull this one off, this will be a huge win. I thought he finished six of his nine wins, guys. This is the tenth and final round. And I tell you, the doctor in most fights would have been checking uh, uh, that job. swelling. Stop. That yeah. beard, that beard, I'm telling you, is, is, <laughs> is, is keeping them from realizing just how swollen he is. Yeah. The referee hasn't asked for it, and the doctor has not come to the corner. Right. Three minutes remain. I think Mamoun is looking for another big finish like he had earlier when he dropped Francis. He's just timing and calculating that counter, isn't he, Roy? Yep. Francis looks so good throwing combinations yes, this late. Yes, he does. This hard in the fight. And as tall as he is, it makes it look really good. Antonio, the tap, tap, tap. Early on, the unpredictable became predictable. As you talked about, when he did the flurry before, changed everything up and he landed big shots. Again, right there. Yes, you know what he's doing. He's taking the power off the shots and more speed and timing, and that equates power. Yep. And also, that's what I wanted to see. If you add the third and fourth shot to the combination, Mamoun a lot of times keeps his gloves home. So he gives you a chance to add punches to those combinations. It's great that you said that, Antonio. One of the quotes from Francis, I feel like I'm a fast fighter, and at the end of the day, speed, speed. is power. <laughs> <laughs> what a great main uh, event. Yes, it is. This has been a terrific main event. Uh. Terrific card, top to bottom. for a better fight. 
I tell you, Mamoun nice sometimes, call. Top Mamoun, top. Mamoun sometimes fights like a clever southpaw, but man, when he has to get down and dirty in the he mud, does. he's, he he's a junkyard dog. He's yeah, been yeah. coming forward for nine I, rounds I, with a broken I, I, jaw. I tell you, he's a winner. That's what I like about it. He's a winner. With a broken jaw like that, you can't act for much better than that. And this is what we need to start doing in boxing. When a guy lay it on the line like this, even in defeat, you hey, celebrate not that. punish this guy. You got to bring him right back. Of course. And this is a good fight, entertaining fight. These are the kind of fights that fighters that you want to see fight again, regardless of the, re of the result. Mamoun needs something big, though, I'm feeling. You got to be I think careful. Francis has taken the last two or three rounds. Yeah. I think Frank, uh, I think Mamoun needs something big right now. You got to be careful here, too, though, because Francis is still a big puncher, still David. Good shot. It's a very good fight, two very good fighters. You couldn't add for a better main event, I don't think. No, no. It's like we talked about, is that 45, the A-side? You turn it over and there's another great song. It's the other A-side. <laughs> the, crowd, the crowd has been loud in this place, man. Yeah, they have. They loved every minute of this fight. They've gotten their money's worth, yes. Not a bad seat in the house, baby. You got that right. It's Francis, be careful. Uh, has to be careful. Francis looking for that same kind of right course. Like, of course he will. Good shot. He need more of that. Keep it up. What a spectacular main event showcase. No blow again. Oh, they're close. Good left hand. Good they go the distance. What a right. fight. Great fight. Yes, wow. They both feel good. Mamoun thinks he won. Good close to the 10th round from Mamoun. Was it enough to eat the last round? I think the last round could come into big, into play yeah. in the final decision. This fight is close. That was a good fight. And, I, I, and don't, don't either way, that there was the point deduction earlier, too. Yeah, and that extra point. Yeah, because two knockdowns, they both lost the point. But that Goldie, the point Goldie just made really comes into factor here. Uh, Francis lost an extra point because of the foul. One thing Tony taught to, to said here was when guys perform like this, they want to serve to be bought right back. Yeah, we want to see these guys again, exactly. And this is what we this is what we push here at Pro Box. Good fighters and great fights. Yep. And we want to keep bringing those good fighters and great fights and keep bringing them back regardless of result because that's the entertainment value that brings fans to the fights bring fans to the TV sets, to their electronic, whatever they have, and watch, watch us on uh, on the Pro Box app and when it when launches and uh, keeps us entertaining. Just got a chance to fight a guy, see a guy fight nine rounds with a broken jaw piece. Wow. Nine rounds. rounds. What about Francis? Only nine and oh fighting a no fight 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 fight. A guy with almost 30 fights. Not just almost 30 fights, a guy with almost 30 fights who's been on international level. Yeah. IBO world champion. Ex IBO world champion. Or for, for, Fought, uh, Victor, Victor, Postal. Fought Victor Postal, who was WBC Super Lightweight Champion and has been the European Champion. In Europe, and maybe over here that doesn't count, but in Europe, no. that's a perfect prestigious title, man. Being a European Champion in Europe is a prestigious title. You can't say enough about either of these guys. No, man. both of these guys. Professional fighters, man. Yeah, and for Francis to have fought Mamoun in that 10th fight with all that experience, you know, it's terrific. The official decision is in. Here's Michael Woods. We have a decision. I didn't steer you wrong. That was a barn burner. That was a 50-50 fight, and both men deserve applause right now. I also told you that pro box fighters are aggressive. You guys keep coming, and we're going to keep giving you this. All right? All right. Decision is as follows. Michael Ross scores at 94-93. Joanne Richard, 95-92. Brian Gary, 95-92. And your winner, unanimous decision, Sethar Frenzy! No, Frenzy. The Rain Man. Rough. Mohammed Mahmoud, you fought a great fight. Thanks for coming to Florida. <laughs> Cesar Francis he really, by unanimous decision. He gave a wrong score. But no, the referee raised the wrong guy's hand. The, 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 wrong guy the, 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 there we go. Uh oh. The referee messed up. And, and poor Mahmoud. He said it right. And poor Mahmoud. 
He said it right. Paul Mahmoud, the, yeah, the referee messed up because Paul Mahmoud doesn't understand he English. Don't English. He don't understand English. He don't understand English. Yeah, so when the referee raised his hand, he thought he won the fight. But the referee raised the wrong person's yep. hand. And because Mahmoud doesn't understand English, not understanding the official announcement, he thought... Yeah, he hurt he right now. The, he, he, he hurt, man. He hurt right now. He, he thought he was awarded the fight. Yeah. Because the referee raised referee, his hand. Yeah. And I had a feeling both guys were going to... I had a feeling both guys were going to feel like they won the fight. So whoever loses was going to feel like he got robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was Cesar Francis the thinking? Referee, all broke. The referee messed it up. The referee messed it up. The re the Bro, referee, talking the referee raised your hand, but Muhammad Muhammad. The, referee, the referee called his name. You know what I'm saying? The referee, the referee did it wrong. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. Yeah. A little explanation from the moon, who obviously English is not his first language, so he needs uh, the explanation. Yeah. When he hears the announcement, he doesn't really understand yeah. it. All he knows is the referee who being having his hand raised, right. and so he thinks, it, okay, it, I won the fight. He didn't hear. Yeah. He doesn't understand the announcement, but he understands the referee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he don't understand the announcement. What you do understand is when the referee raises your hand. Yeah. You know, so, that, so he's thinking he won the fight. The referee raises his hand because the referee misunderstood exactly. the official announcement. Exactly. Panama in his blood, Brooklyn in his heart, and the biggest win of Cesar Francis's career. Wow. He moves to 10-0 in his first 10-round fight. Never a dull moment at a pro box show. You got that right. <laughs> Yeah, you guys aren't going anywhere for good reason. That's because we got more fights coming up. Pro box, baby. We bring the heat, we bring the aggression because it's about fighting. Great fight. Yeah, it was. Great yeah, fight. Yeah. That's why we say, here we go. It's time to fight. What a great set of matchups tonight on our Contenders Series. We started with Josiah Shirley and Giovanni Bennett. And both men were able to throw it down. And then you see some highlights from this main event of the evening and what a main event it was. Going into the tenth, both men let it all rip. Cesar Francis by unanimous decision. Great night of fights, Pro Box TV. We will be back May 20th as we launch globally with the return of one great champion, Jean Pascal, and Fun Ming Lung, one of the greatest fighters out there in the top light heavyweight division now representing China. Early on, we got started with super lightweights in Orlando, Florida's Josiah Shirley was spectacular. That is one tough 40-year-old, Anthony Stewart. He took everything from Najee Lopez, but Najee Lopez remains unbeaten with four stoppages. That one in the fourth, the heavyweight battle. A combined 553.4 pounds, and it went to Christian Thun. And then in our main event of the evening, it was absolutely spectacular. Ten rounds unanimous decision for Cesar Francis. For the Magic Men, Paulie Molinaggi, Antonio Tarver, and Superman Roy Jones Jr., Mike Goldberg saying so long from Pro Box TV.